Boom! We are back in, Jerkoffs. How you doing? Daniel Muggleton here. Goddamn pleasure as always. Uh, back in London, it's raining, but hot, but raining, which means summer is approaching at any minute. I'm sorry, this is another late upload, but I have spent the last week in Europe doing shows. Shout out to Luxembourg, Amsterdam, and Brussels, the mighty Brussels. I've had two gigs in Brussels, still not sure how I feel about Belgian people, all right? If the Brexit thing was a vote to just not have anything to do with Brussels anymore, I would probably vote leave. I think that's where I'd stand, but hey, Luxembourg, uh, Netherlands, great times had by all uh, the guys at the Comedy Embassy in Amsterdam sorting me out, and Luxembourg, I mean, I still have absolutely no idea what Luxembourg is, having spent a day and a half there. Uh, I think they speak French, but there's like this other weird thing that they speak. It was like this city where there's like a nice bit and then like a train station bit and there's a big valley in the middle. Like they've just got space for Lord of the Rings to happen in the middle of their city. Like honestly, it's like a 50 meter drop. These beautiful lush grassy areas with trees and like the world's biggest skate park and like these weird bridges that also have under bridges but on top of bridges and then like a path underneath it's all very strange uh but if you're planning on going i mean go if you're not planning on going you're not missing much that's all i'm saying the main thing that i can't figure out is that the netherlands flag and the luxembourg flag are the exact same flag like there is like a slight difference in the shade of blue and red but they are almost identical. If anyone knows if they came from the same flag or if like Luxembourg split off from the Netherlands at some point, please get in touch at the Union Jackoff on Twitter. Um, and as always, thank you for getting in touch over the week. Love hearing your comments. If you do enjoy the podcast and are a regular listener, I know the subscribers are growing. Make sure you do subscribe because it means you get the episodes automatically whenever they come out, which is particularly handy when you're dealing with someone like me who is known for their inconsistency. And you can also give us five stars on iTunes. That would be awesome. It helps us get visibility, helps us get sponsors, all the fun stuff you love. Um, Beyond that, I'm about to dive into this week's guest, Kay Curd. Very excited to have Kay on the podcast. He just recorded a special in London a couple of days ago, sold out show. Uh, he is the the founder, I think, the, the, the original member of The Quote is Full, which is a great podcast that a lot of our previous guests also appear on regularly, like everyone's favorite Dane Baptiste, as well as Ishan Akbar, still the only person I know who had sex for the first time in a house that he owned insane and he wasn't like 40 years old you know this is like this is like a young man he was like 18 great episode check that out if you haven't listened to it already in the back catalog um but yes i'm really excited to talk to Kay because he is kurdish and now i've heard the word kurds and kurdistan thrown around a lot but i absolutely have no concept of them as a as a as a culture or as a nation uh and i think that probably is the same for a lot of people and I'm excited to have him on to talk about that. Uh, he moved to the UK when he was very young, but his father actually fought for the Kurdish troops against like Iraq and Iran and stuff, which is pretty cool. So definitely excited to talk to him about that, as well as coming to the UK as an immigrant at such a young age. You know, like you know, does he does he feel Kurdish? Does he feel British? What is he? Where is he at? Where's where's his allegiances? Who does he support in the football? Like, where does this all happen? But excited to talk to him. Before I get to him, though, just one last thing. As I mentioned last week, uh, my special that I filmed, just like Kay, on my own, nobody helped me out, self-produced, uh, and then it's been released worldwide. That is now on Amazon Prime. Finally. Initially, they wanted you to pay for it. I think that's ludicrous. Just stream that shit. And now it is on Amazon Prime all over the place. You can check it out free with your subscription to Amazon Prime. And if you do enjoy it, again, please do leave a review. I know I'm like you. I don't review stuff. I'm a bad cyber citizen, but it does make a difference if you review things. Helps me out. Let's me see your feedback. I'm always curious. 
uh, so far. Just so you know, everyone's given the special five stars. So if you guys could keep that going, that would be fantastic news. Uh, and the, the final thing, just a little quick observation about the UK that I've been, I've been grappling with. I don't know if anyone has had this. If you have, please do get in touch. But I, I, I've had very sore feet here. Like the outside of my feet are very sore. I thought it was my shoes because, uh, you know, I do, I do a lot of walking. I wear sneakers the whole time. I figure like maybe they're just a little bit worn out. Bought some fresh sneakers. Same issue. The outside of my feet, like the, the foot, the part of the foot, the ball of the foot, but where like the little toe is, the pinky toe, that is really sore. And it has been for, in London. Like, I've never had this in Australia uh, I don't really understand it. I thought it was the walking, but I think I figured out why. I don't know if this is like across the whole UK or just the part of Shoreditch where I live, but I think the streets here have a much harsher gradient than in Australia. Like in Australia, like the streets, like the sidewalk, the footpath, generally very flat. Like the bit where you're walking, generally very flat. And I think here there's a big gradient because it rains so much because you need the drainage. So like because I do do a lot of walk walking, it's like really putting a lot of pressure on that inside foot, on the gradient. So I'm just kind of wearing it out a lot. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's undergoing much more endurance. Like it's, it's enduring more than it was back in Australia. And that's why I'm getting this pain. But I might just be a complete idiot who needs better shoes. I don't know. But I'm putting that out to you. Do you think streets in the UK, harsher gradient because of the rain, and that is affecting the way that we walk, and the reason it's not affecting British people is because they're lazy pieces of shit who don't walk anywhere. What do you say about that? What do you say about that, jerk-offs? Is it a good theory? Is it a bad theory? Let me know. Get me on Twitter, at Dan Muggleton. Anyway, enough of that. Good ramble. Let's get into a great chat, a long chat, an in-depth chat with the very funny K. Kurt. There we go. And we're in. Um, I like that you did Booyah and Booyah Kasha. Just like some nice little cultural appropriation yeah. early on. I, I, whoa. I mean, I haven't even said those words in years, but. You haven't said those words in years, but you I saw just, me and you were like, like, this guy. This guy, that's the. He, he, he likes 90s Ali G references. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the track pants? It's just like white guy in track just, pants or the mustache. And the mustache. I was like, there you go. Ali G references for this guy. Oh, how dare you? I, <laughs> I mean, I've been getting that recently, like a little bit. A little bit too much, I think. I've been getting like people like, you look like Borat. I never used to get that. But now I'm getting it. No, just like just in life. I never oh. used to get it anywhere. Whereas like here it's, it's happening mustache, a little though. bit. Thank like, you. If you. Like if you were Kurdish, yeah? you'd garner some respect. <laughs> that <laughs> Is that how it works? <laughs> no, 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 but like, you know, do you know what Kurds like nickname each other like like Italian mobsters? It's like Johnny Tight Lips. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. So like like there'll be there's so many people like so and so blue eyes and so and so blue eyes. Yeah. Is that like, like a thing? Like yeah, you yeah, got blue yeah, eyes yeah. and you're Kurdish, everyone's like Phew. Yeah, like, so there'll be like, uh, Mohammed Blue Eyes. There's a Mohammed Blue Eyes that's like a is singer. <laughs> like, oh, honestly. so like, uh, is it like Frank Sinatra? That's like old Blue Eyes, is it? Yeah, but. That was his nickname. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so like, it, they, they nickname people like that. Like, so if you've got a great mustache, they'll be like, oh, yeah. that's Danny Mustache. Danny Mustache. Yeah. I'd take so, that. Do you know what I mean? There's Danny, Danny Tash or whatever. Do you know what I mean? They'll be like, oh, right. shit. Like, and then that's how people would know you. Just Danny Moustache. Yeah. They wouldn't bother with the last name. Probably like, Danny, Danny Tash. Yeah, Danny, Danny Tash? Tash? Yeah. I don't mind Danny Tash. Danny Tash sounds like a good nickname. Bro. It'd, yeah, it'd be easier to get on a fucking poster. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, Muggleton. Yeah. Muggleton. Like, graphic Muggleton designers sounded, like, what, I, I'm not going to lie. I thought Muggleton was a stage name. I thought... So many people have said that. Because of the glasses and everything, I thought it was a Harry Potter thing. Really? Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got I, around glasses as well. So I was like... Oh shit, he likes, oh Muggle, oh he's really taking his shit too far. Really? Yeah. You, wait, I literally thought I was going to turn up and there was lots of Harry Potter memorabilia. And, right and can you just verify it for the No, for your, the your house is fucking awesome. Your house looks like, you know one of the examples they'd have like in Ikea, like one, like 
the mid. <laughs> So you see, not like a the kit, fully expensive room. one, but like yeah. the one just below that, yeah, like yeah, yeah. that one. But it's definitely not the entry level. It's like okay. I mean, I mean that door's a bit wonky, but oh, apart man, from that one, the the kitchen stuff is a bit yeah. Like yeah. there's like melting stuff over there, like yeah, on and those there's ones. Like lots of alcohol and and shit. Well, that that was that was a, that was a gift from my housemate's girlfriend. She got the she got the alcohol stand. I don't really I don't really get. Well, it. you lot had a wine glass in your toilet. That's what I said. So like yeah, you lot are living life. Man. <laughs> Well, look, we ran out of glasses. You got wine glass in the bathroom. What are they, what are they doing in there? I don't know. It's I not mean, my bathroom, as I said. This is like my housemate. Girls love doing that shit, though, innit? Like, what, go, wine in the bath? Yeah, they'll have like a glass of wine in the bath, like bubbles, and then they'll Instagram, <laughs> they'll Instagram themselves like on Instagram story, like me time or self-care Sunday or some shit. Right. And then it's just like a picture of their legs in, in bubbles. And, yeah. And we're all like, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, it does sound great. If you I could mean, let me know but the guys, to guys, follow. But it just doesn't look good when guys do it. Like, you know, you've got your feet, it's some hairy leg. Yeah. And a, and a wine glass just doesn't look quite... Yeah, looks, it looks like you've got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> when a guy goes into the bathroom with a with wine, I don't know, just, yeah. Yeah. No, just like, if a guy is like, yeah, just enjoy wine in the bath, and I'm like, you have an alcohol addiction. Yeah, but if you've got a beer, you'd probably be like, oh, he's fucking having a great time. Well, I think that's the thing. Girl, wine glass bath, guy, shower beer. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, we want to be standing, we want to be drinking a beer. Standing. You put your thumb in to keep the beer fine, you know? Um, yeah, well. Have you not? I don't, I don't drink beer, so <laughs> that's just fucking mental. Well, look, just, this, is, this, is how, this is how we go. I mean, I don't, I don't want anything in the shower apart from the shower. Yeah. That's like, you know, like sometimes girls will be like, oh, can I get in the shower? Like, no. I've seen people drink, like this is like at festivals and carnival and stuff. Yeah. While they're taking a piss and they're drinking. And I'm like... At the same you're time. literally... Yeah, like it's like you're, you're, you're replenishing the liquids you're getting rid of in your body yeah. simultaneously. You're just like, no, I need to do this. I'd like if that's the only time they drink. Like, <laughs> what? Only while you're in I need to get these two liters in, baby. <laughs> That's their play. It's like, oh man, I must be thirsty. I'm I pissing. Drink way like, oh. too much water. Like I'll drink about four liters a day. So I'm... isn't that good though? I thought we're supposed it's meant to, to be... be good. It's meant to be good for your skin. Well, you have nice skin. Thank you. Thank I you think. Much. Touch wood. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Touch wood. <laughs> well, hey, Don't happened. want to jinx your good skin. Yeah. So. Um, do you moisturize? Do you have moisturize, a moisturize? Do you have a uh, regimen? Yeah. Really. So like I use a charcoal face scrub in the mornings. Yeah. I can't even really say the rest to be honest with you, bro. Like. Why would is, it hurt? This is it hurt nah, the image. This is just like. One of my friends really got in. She she told me everything to use, and then she was just like, "Can't really, can't be really giving these secrets out to people because I charge for right. it." So I'm like, "Yo, so oh, so she wow, this is in trouble for it now." You're yeah. not embarrassed She's by it. You're just no. like, you're just like, I'm literally selling someone's business. Yeah, yeah. If so, I tell yeah, you, yeah, yeah. So no, nah, man. But yeah, I, I take care of my skin, man. Take care of your skin. I don't give a fuck what anyone says, man. Take care <laughs> of your skin, man. Uh, <laughs> half of you look fucking shit for your age. There was, um, do you, have you ever, um, all right. So I was on Twitter and there was this thread. There was a thread. There was a thread of what young football players looked like in like the eighties and seventies. Yeah. And like, shit you not. There was people that are 26 that look like 45 year olds and 50 year olds now. This is like back when they used to like smoke and work and yeah. play football. So like they had like, like yeah. hard lives and shit. Bro, they looked <laughs> fucked in it. Like they just... I was like 26, like yeah. legitimate 26, the guy's looking like Jeff Innocent. And you're like, <laughs> you're like how is he 26, bro? Like, and I love Jeff in it, but like you can tell Jeff's his age, innit? Yeah. But yeah. You're not looking at Jeff being like that 26 year old. Yeah, like like Jeffrey's age stressed. looks great. Do you know what I mean? But like if if you look like that at 26, you're like, fuck, bro. Like Yeah, I mean, I get weirded out by English ages in general. Cause like there's no consistency. Like, I think with Australians, like we kind of look our age, like generally. How do you? I'm 29. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You look to, I'm to the same age. So, yeah, 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 exactly. Like pretty much the same, right? Yeah. But like in England, you can have like an 18 year old who looks 40, or you can have a 30 year old who looks 12. I don't know what it is, man? And it's, it's just, I, I think it's just the class thing. It's I think just like the if poverty they, stricken faces. Just if they like work, fucking... <laughs> <laughs> they actually work with their fucking hands. It's, they look terrible, bruv. Yeah, I was. I, I remember watching Seinfeld, and they were like, someone was like, Seinfeld's like in his sixties. He was like, Yeah, you look great for a second. Seinfeld was like, Yeah, I've never done a day's work in my life. Like, <laughs> of course, I look good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so people underestimate like if you just sleep, how important sleep is. Like, yeah. When I, I remember when I was working full time, right? I, when I came straight out of university and I started working full time, and I was like, I remember a month in. Yeah. I was like, How the fuck do people do this? 
for 40 years. <laughs> Man, I've never done it. I've never worked full time. Dude, I was just like, yo, like you wake up every morning at six or seven, whatever yeah. it is, right? And it, like you're stressed before you get into work. Right. Because you're like fighting people on a tube to get on. Ne- yeah, next peak door. hour. Bro, like you're, yeah. you're squashed on a train. Your face is in someone's armpit. It's, I think that is the one of the great things about being a comedian. People are like, oh, isn't it nice making people laugh? It's like, no, no, no. It's nice traveling when no one else is traveling. Yeah. We'd never. Sublime. We just get a seat. Sublime. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. When I go on like the, the tube and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm sitting down. And people are like, oh, I hate using the tube. And I'm like, wow, the tube's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it gets you places so quickly or whatever. But then you yeah. catch it in the morning, like by accident. You're like, oh, no. This or like is you've awful. got a meeting or someone like in town and they're like, yeah, we need to be at that time. And you catch it and you're like, fucking hell, bro. Yeah, but they do it every day. Like That's, that's what I'm saying. Every and, day. And you're stressed ah. for your whole... Like, you're stressed even <laughs> before you get into work. So you're, you're, you're already in a, in a bad mindset to work. Like, yeah. like when you have a fucked up journey for, to a gig... Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. like, oh, fuck. I know exactly man. what you mean. Yeah, Bus like, is late. You got to run to the thing. Yeah, you're, you're like, sweating, whatever, whatever. Your phone runs out of battery. You're like, fuck. But just imagine all of that in a suit and sh- <laughs> <laughs> And, and shoes and you're like yeah. like because just running in shoes is annoying and like yeah and then i don't even own shoes i just got sneakers and that's this it. is my point like <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck wants to wear shoes yeah but like but now have you noticed that have you noticed that we're relaxing everything to do with work as a society like people in suits and sneakers on the tube they're like i got my work shoes that dude, i wear at work dude, you know when you start wearing trainers like sneakers with a suit yeah it's like that is what i'm like you've lost it like you, you've officially no given, no i think no 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 it's not a rebellion it's not <laughs> a fight back it is you just going this is the man i've become now but uh i'd i'd think there's power in giving up <laughs> nah man it is literally you I've, just going uh, fuck i've lost I the well. only thing i can do now is protect my knees on this journey home because run- no get out of here no <laughs> you're wrong because is- running with shoes on is gonna fuck up my knees at least let me have well, my running slip training. these are not athletes I don't you know, know running running in those like hard bottom shoes i don't know how they do it just just take an uber man take an uber like, if- well, you got uber money do, you, know, do right. you remember when you were like younger and you looked at people in suits and you were like they must be so powerful they must make so much money yeah whatever yeah, then you yeah, just yeah. realize it's any one of your mates working in like fucking marketing or some yeah yeah some yeah shitty job like well I think the, the funny thing is like in suits it's like now it's like you kind of want to graduate beyond the suit yeah you know what I mean like there's like an income stream that's suit and then Flexi there's like time. then there's like that next one <laughs> yeah, yeah. like that one above that where it's like yeah you can wear jeans bro yeah 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 like, yeah, yeah just a college casual shirt will do. yeah we're yeah. very casual here turn up at ten like, yeah 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 <laughs> shit flex time as long as you get anything you need done and just, then there's the suit again. Then there's yeah, like yeah, the, but that's that, there's that like, CEO board level shit. Yeah, yeah, and you can tell by the quality of the, the fit of the yeah, suit. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's yeah. suit. Yeah, and then it's there's not off casual. the rack from Burton or some shit. Exactly. Like, then it's, fitted suit. As soon as your suit Bolton, is fitted, yeah, oof, that's yeah, nice. Yeah. But you, where, where'd you work then? Where were you working? Was it suit work or was it not so, suit uh, work? I worked in financial services for about six months when I left. Okay. Uni. Like it was, uh, I, I graduated in the middle of the credit crunch. Right. In 2008. Yeah, gotcha. So I was like... I need money. And everyone was like, oh my God, it's hard to get a job. I knew a girl that worked in recruitment. She got me a job in a financial services company. Mm. Boom. Like started working there. And do you know what? I I feel like a fraud saying I worked in financial services. Yeah. Because like the first couple of months was just... No, the first month was just training. Okay. And no work had come in because we were on a specific project. I can't really talk about signing NDAs and stuff, but yeah, we were on a specific project and the work for that project hadn't come in. So for two months, I was just reading a book. Just every day. Desk. And you were stressed. At my <laughs> desk. No, no, no. But it was when the actual work started right. three months in. Okay. And then we had to change office like, and we relocated uh, our office and whatever. And I was like, this doesn't feel like a youth club anymore. Like, you know I mean? like, before we were just chatting to each other and whatever. Yeah. Like, it was like a, like it was a whole bunch of graduates that started as a graduate program. Right. And then once I got, once the work started coming in, I was like, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa. We're going to stop doing this. Three months in, I was like, you know what? This isn't for me. I'm going to like three months into actual rework. So six yeah, months yeah, in, yeah. I was like, yeah, no, nah, I'm like, I remember I was working in Tower Hill. Tower Hill. Okay. 
That's central. Or the Royal Mint building. You know, like it's like yeah, where yeah. Tom Tom Horton lives. Previous guest of the podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He'd so have I'm, a good commute, man. Yeah, yeah. Just, walk, <laughs> just walking walk in, like, straight oh out the tower. Amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing. <laughs> um, so I remember just I, I got I, I got into work early for once. So I was just like, let me just chill by this bench by the station, right? Yeah. I had a coffee in my hand. I was just looking around at people just running out of the tube. Yeah. Into like these different buildings, scuttling away into these different buildings, right? And I was just like, is this my fucking life? Like forever, like there's got yeah. to be more than this shit, man. There's no end date. Yeah, yeah, there's got to be more. Than... Sorry, I didn't graduate in 2008. I graduated in 2011. Sorry, I, I started uni in 2008. There yeah. you go. 2011, yeah. And um, I don't know why. I just remember thinking that. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. How <laughs> like do you fact check yeah, yourself? Yeah, 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 I was like, like I got some like producer here being <laughs> like, actually, okay, it's, um, <laughs> yeah. I think you'll find you graduated in 2011. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Stop yeah. fucking lying yeah. to the listeners. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, but um. Yeah, and I was just like, dude, I can't do this. And I had to search for meaning in life. and Search for meaning in life. And you yeah. found that in comedy? I was just like, just, just do what you want to do in it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think so. Until, until eventually that can't pay for your suit and sneakers. And then you got to... Yeah, you got to do something else. But so no. then I work. I've, I've worked like in loads of part-time jobs, like in fucking gyms and right. retail and. Shit. I can see that you got a you got a good work in a gym head. You know what I mean? Everything is precise. <laughs> I get a haircut once a week. That's yeah, I know. Image, yeah, yeah, yeah. Image, bro. <laughs> as you can see, no. Nah. Do you know what it was, bro? <laughs> like as vibe. well, like I used to do a bit of boxing. I remember, right. I remember I got like punched in the nose and the eye a couple of times, and like one time I got like a little mark, and I was like. Dude, I'm not doing this shit anymore. I was like, I'm trying to make a living off this face, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean, I don't want to get into a stage where people are like, "Yo, how'd you get about? How'd you get a black eye? Talk about a black eye on stage." It's, it's like, like do you no, know I mean? no. Like, why is your nose crooked now? And it's like, nah, man. Like, I just rather, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, just, just rather swimming, have swimming, and, <laughs> and lifting weights. Like those two. Yeah, that's the thing with like all that shit, where it's like physically, like you know, it's like those guys who do like jujitsu and like wrestling, and it's like you get like you see them with like a swollen you ear, to, like Rogan. Yeah, like you just Rogan. like you just you just the guy is on stage and he's trying to tell a story, and you're just like, what happened to your ear? <laughs> Tell me about the ear. Precisely, isn't it? Like you can't, it's like when comics go with a lazy eye, go on and don't address it. Yeah. And we're stood there the whole time going, dude, he's got a fucking lazy eye. Does he know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> tell me, like just fuck it. Like, just to address anything it is, right? Like, yeah. So, for example, you're Australian. If you go on stage and you don't mention the fact you're Australian, yeah. even with the accent. It just gets it out of the way. Yeah. Just like, obviously, like, I'm Dan, I'm Australian, right? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Don't even have to speak about it afterwards, but like, just address it. Like, let us know that is what you are. Well, it's like, I think, I think if it's like, you know, obviously if you're like black, I think you can go on stage and just talk and everyone oh, will be yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure that guy's black. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But if it's like, if it's like an Australian accent and mine's not that strong. Yeah, but again, then people it, are just going to be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Where's but that guy from? Even if it was a black guy, but he had like an American accent. Yeah. It was a black guy with a with like another accent you'd be like yo dude like that's not yeah you're not hackney in it right you're not like from brixton or whatever yeah yeah but well, this needs some explainer yeah, yeah we yeah. need some context yeah. for you exactly and then exactly, exactly so wait do you do you mention that you're kurdish i mean you go 100%. up as k kurd yeah it's just, just in like, case anyone's wondering yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. why i think you think i got a stage name because you got yeah, one yeah, yeah sneaky yeah yeah so um, um yeah because it, it was yeah it's, I, I i do talk about it do you know what i never used to but then so, when i got um management and whatever and they were like you should talk about being Kurdish and like yeah. a lot of other agents were saying like yeah you should talk about it and then I was like I did and then I was like oh this actually is great because it's interesting it's interesting it's interesting people yeah listen. I mean well that the thing that I find funny right is like I think and I was I was gonna I was gonna ask you about this because as an Australian I give I say that I'm Australian because people have an immediate context for an Australian yeah, person. Yeah, you live in Clapham, you work in a pub. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, just like, and you're racist. Like, you know, all this stuff that then I use, well, uh, that's I not lean on. true? <laughs> no, no, it is, absolutely. <laughs> They're accurate stereotypes, right? They're stereotypes for a reason. But yeah. I was just going to say, with like, saying that you're Kurdish. Like, if you were like, hey, I'm Kurdish, I'd be like, cool. And no, nothing. 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 And, that's like where you... is, and that's where I, where I, what I talk about, in it? So yeah. I'm like, none of you have a fucking clue it's what It's just this like, is. hey, man, do a Kurdish accent. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it could exactly. Be, it could be anything. Exactly. And that's yeah. where it is. That's where I was like, and somebody made that point to me because obviously right. nobody knows. And I was like, yeah, they don't. So I sort of 
So the sh- special I just shot was called Curd Your Enthusiasm and it explained all of that shit. Right. So it just explains C- being who Kurdish. Kurds are, being Kurdish, what it entails, like, do you know what I mean? Everything. Yeah. So people, it's like a little brief history lesson and cultural lesson into it. Yeah. And it's also very funny. So, <laughs> so like, yeah. I was, it, it just needed some explaining. Well, th- this is the thing, because, like, I, you know, with, with this, like, I like to talk about people moving to the UK and you very conveniently have a Wikipedia page. So I've just, I got everything sorted. I got notes. I'm ready to go. I, I wonder how accurate is because i know some people do their own wikipedia page i did not like really so, yeah. man i'd say it is it is like one of the most precise wikipedia pages i've ever seen like it's like this happened then this happened then this is what people have said done that's fucking joke like so. no speculation I, do you know it's what like i legit. haven't read it you haven't read fuck off you haven't i read haven't it. read it i do not believe the you fir- for one I, second i swear to you i haven't read it i just because i was like i think the first time it went up i looked at it and i was yeah. just like I don't want to know what this shit says in it because like it just feels a bit weird Wikipediaing yourself. Yeah, I mean, you say that I Google myself regularly just to <laughs> check. Do you ever search your name in mentions on Twitter? Like, just if you've yeah, met, dude. Like, you just I remember once I like, this kid Kurt guy ain't even that funny. I was like, fuck, <laughs> fuck <laughs> you. Like, <laughs> it was years ago, I was like, the fuck, like who's this yeah. person? He just I end up blocking him. Really? <laughs> just I I don't I just search it because like. I don't know. I'm always just curious if like someone said stuff because I just got my, my thing came out on Amazon and like I just read the reviews because I'm just like, what are people saying? And it's like, it's funny because one of them's just like, uh, didn't expect much, but glad I watched it. Like that's like the title. It's positive. <laughs> it's positive. But like the way they framed it is like it's yeah. negative. But, but no, I don't think that you should see it that way. I mean, I'm a negative person. I don't know if you can tell. You seem like a positive person. You know what I mean? That's how you can tell. You go to the taking gym, time. you're a positive it's person. It's taking time to get to that stage, man. Taking time to get positive. Yeah, man. Wait, I want to I wanna get into that. But first, I want to I wanna start at the beginning. I want to I wanna do a little of Kurd Your Enthusiasm. Is that all right? Oh, yeah, fine. Just a little bit of Kurd stuff. I don't yeah. want to step on your show. <laughs> no, that's all so right. So if you like, right. I got a sick It'll joke be out about out soon, yeah. Yeah, good. Um, good. It's got to gotta release shit. Um, that's important. But no, the one thing about Kurdish that I... Kurds that I was curious about because I was like in my head I had like Kurdistan yeah right that's what I had I'm like that's where they are that's where they live it's all in the name yeah that's not true they're like so it's a region it's a region Kurdistan is what we would love to name the independent country that we will one day hopefully get yes looks extremely unlikely so you guys like Scotland in this regard it's a a bit of Wales because at least Scotland has a bit more power right okay so closer to Wales so Kurds are spread between Iraq Iran Turkey and Syria yeah the largest of it being uh, in Turkey now in Iraqi Kurdistan the Kurdistan region Mm. has its own government yes so you have a Kurdistan regional government which is only its jurisdiction is Iraqi Kurdistan yeah now within that you we have our own parliament you have our own functioning government Mm -hmm. two international airports yeah well it essentially runs like a state within a state but gotcha. it's a federal region. So it is a bit like Scotland in that regard there. Yeah, they've got right. you got your own thing going on, but it's not independent yeah. as a nation. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And there got was it. an independence referendum and then a whole bunch of bullshit happened. Ah, yeah, we ninety six percent voted to try and break away from Iraq and then the Iraqi army came in again and ninety six percent. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I I, I want to know who that fucking four percent <laughs> <laughs> like going, No, nah, I'm all right, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, but then in 96. <laughs> yeah. holy shit yeah, yeah. and then oh uh, man that's a high distinction yeah like that's crazy. That, it, yeah. it wasn't like Brexit like you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah, there yeah. was no in or out like, yeah, maybe like, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, a yeah. fucking no. definitive <laughs> get us the fuck away from these Arabs um, <laughs> <laughs> I say that for comic effect but that's um, essentially what it was sure um, wait and so the, wait Kurdish people don't see themselves as like Arabs like, no. it's different so we have ah. a, so Kurds are Indo-European Mm-hmm. So, it's like Istanbul. No, <laughs> that's the best. Thing so, um, the best way to describe, like, so, if you look at Kurdish, the language, mm-hmm. it comes under the Iranic language branch, which also covers Farsi. Yeah. Um, which is what they speak Persian. Yeah. Well. Persians love. Thank to you. Fucking, Thank you for translating yeah. it for white people. You're I fucking, appreciate that. You're fucking Iranian. <laughs> um, Ira- so yeah, you got Farsi, uh, Urdu. Yeah. Uh, which is what they speak predominantly in Pakistan yep, and places Pakistan. like that. Uh, Pashto, which is an Afghan language. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. I think there's a couple of others as well. Anyway. Yeah. But they. That's why when Iran was formed after the Persian Empire, they called it Iran because it 
encompassed all of these Iranic people. Yeah. Gotcha. As opposed to just Persians, but then they just became like... But the Persians are the dominant group yeah, yeah. in Iran. So yeah, we're yeah. kind of like, no, we're all Persian now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Gotcha. So you've got Kurds in Iran as well. Now, Kurds in Iran, there is a region called Kurdistan there as well. Uh-huh. But there's no regional government. There's no authority or autonomy or anything right. like that. Right, it's just so. like an ethnic area, yeah. essentially. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Uh, Syria now it's a bit different because obviously with the fighting there, yeah. the Kurds there who are fighting ISIS predominantly, yeah. they've now uh, carved out an enclave for themselves. Right. Yeah. So. So they're kind of have going to have the same as in a. Well, I mean, yeah, that's essentially I think what they want, but sure. the their governing systems are rather different. It's a lot more. I feel it's a lot more democratic. They have these separate cantons, right? And within each of those, they have like a male chair and a female chair, mm-hmm. um, and it's all like very much about uh, right, so they got like a male and a female yeah it's got two you yeah. like the male and you like the woman so yeah so it's, it's a, even that, the heads of party is like a man and a woman like they'll have one of each so it's just like they co-head it that seems to be a good system very progressive yeah, yeah well, it's why? weirdly more pro- but when people th- talk about a middle east and places like that then, so you get kurdish female fighters as well that were fighting against isis so right. there's a whole documentary about that and stuff as well like yeah you actually get f- women fighters out there that's so weird that's such a good system I've never yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly like like and people are like hey why don't we just have one of each like it would make sense right yeah just the, like because I, I but i get it. wait but there's two then so then like any decision it can go like one one no no but it's I it mean, so work decisions like are more made at so like it's more at a grassroots level so each yeah. like there's more power within the community so each little and then it all goes to, towards the top just see where i'm coming from yeah, so yeah i get you there's more power at a local level so they're kind so of more like the spokespeople more than like yeah the, the, yeah but the that, executive but, that need to make the decision but they've got 50 50 councils yeah right so okay if even in in your community say for example we're, we're in shoreditch right yeah. now right so it'd be like the people of shoreditch have elected these guys yeah. half of the council is women half the council is men they will come up with the best ideas for this particular yeah particular area so and then that's what's we, put into we the people the short, yeah, yeah we the people of shoreditch will be like we feel like this is better for us right now and yeah for our level of security and whatever and then they communicate with the other cantons and whatever and it's like right. there's a massive system so that does seem like a better system powers are much more devolved yeah rather than going hey oh, i think this works like which is one of the issues i i have with the eu where it's like yeah if germany makes a decision what, what's to say that's the best decision for a fucking farmer in greece sure wait sorry you, when you said devolve you mean like decentralized like yeah. as in like yeah so yeah. it's just kind of more spread out and yeah. like everyone's kind of gotcha yeah, sorry, yeah i was just yeah yeah no because i i feel like obviously there's certain things that do need to be centralized like yeah. certain certain elements do but i think if there are more like th- i just hate bureaucracy and paperwork yeah it is insane like if 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 a fucking lamppost needs changing right yeah <laughs> do you know what i mean or, i know there yeah. was there was like this um ari shafir had this great joke about that when i saw him in australia it was like because in australia i don't know if you know but like we're really like anti-smoking that's like huge that's great that's like that's like our thing it's like fuck smoking like smoking no do it here and so in pubs, oh, Australia. in pubs, there used to be beer gardens. So you'd smoke in the beer garden, right? That was it. Course, you couldn't yeah. smoke inside, you smoke outside. But then people were like, wait a second, but I want to eat in the beer garden still. But I don't, you can't eat where you smoke. Uh, you know what I mean? So, then, so what they did is like... They'd and sep- I suppose you guys have better weather. So you, your beer gardens are much more populated throughout exactly. the year. Like nine months, 10 months Fuck, of the year. Fuck, yeah. It's not like here where it's like... A yeah. week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beer garden week. Everybody yeah, yeah, gets yeah, yeah, yeah. Just stand in the street like, fuck, this is so nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, so the, so you couldn't, you can't eat in the smoking area, but you have to smoke in the beer garden. So they kind of split the beer gardens into like two. So okay. you have like the smoking section of the beer garden where you couldn't eat and the eating section of the beer like garden. Like a shisha you, cafe. Yeah, where you couldn't smoke. <laughs> yeah. so it's just, like, it's yeah. just separate. But the thing was like smokers eat and smoke at the same time. Like, you know, that, that happens. Vile creatures, yeah. I mean, I, I used to smoke. I quit, so I'm with you now. Yeah. But two years ago, shut your mouth. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so the whole thing was they banned smoking. Sorry, they banned eating in the smoking section. Okay. Even though the smoking section is full of smokers who should be able to eat wherever they want. Like, you know, it doesn't matter. Like, but you lot persecute smokers. Yeah. So, so, but it's just like, but that was like just kind of at a governmental level. But like any kind of just person looking at it would just be like, oh, they can bring food in there. Like- yeah, 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 yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. But exactly. if you put like this legislation, this legislation, this legislation, they're like, no, you can't possibly bring food in there. It's like, you can. It's like a meter away. Just yeah. fucking go yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's insane. But it, yeah. That's what I mean. So like there are certain decisions where you're just like, yeah, well, yeah fuck yeah, well, okay, we'll paint that shit. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Rather than, no, that has to go to the uh, right top up the levels, pole. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, and I think... I think it's a uh, it's a it's a better way to. Do, do you think the UK is very bureaucratic? Like, do you 100%, think? Hundred percent, man. I, I still don't know because, like, I think America's still the top, right? You got to say America's number one. Yeah, but I yeah, think yeah. Australia is more than the UK. Like in in the UK, like you have like power cables just kind of like down into like a food van, just kind of like on the ground or like potholes and shit. In Australia, like that would not be allowed. Well, I I've, I've got up. friends that have lived in Europe and stuff, and when they yeah. come here, they're like, "What the fuck? This is like." This is a free for all. Mm. They're like, th- th- there doesn't seem to be like any law here a lot of the time. And I'm like, with the food vans and stuff, I think so. Like yeah. the markets and shit. Yeah. I'm like, so how the, does that happen? They're, they're all fucking surprised at a lot of shit that happens in this country. Yeah. Like when they're just walking around. Cause like, like our trains are shitter than theirs. And you <laughs> know what I mean? Like just, they're like, how is this even possible? Like your, your streets are dirty. And I'm like, yeah. Like that, there's I, a lot of people. There's just, I live in Shoreditch, bro. These streets are dirty. dirty. They're full of like, what is it? What do you call them? Balloons? Flippets? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We call them Nangs in Australia. You can okay, have that. okay. That? Nangs. That's a good name for a gas Nang canister. was a slang word in East London back in the day. Really? For great. Oh, that's Nang. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's like, that was like... You're, that's you're like talk, old school. You're talking about like the inception of grime, like early okay. 2000s and stuff. Yeah. Early 2000s. Well, that's, that's where Australian slang is up to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Up to the early 2000s. Although I saw like a video the other day. This is, We're going really off topic. But like, you know, UK drill music. Drum music? Drill. 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 No, so it's like drill? rap, but like it's at a certain tempo and it's all, it's mainly about like stabbing people and shanking. And sure. It's all, a bunch of guys in like balaclavas and whatever. Okay. But it was Australian drill. Really? Like Australian version of UK drill. We don't even have stabbings. What the fuck Bro, are we talking about? This place. <laughs> no, nah, these guys were, they were hard, man. Like it was, <laughs> they were like, like, and I found their profile. Like it's just loads of pictures of them in JD sports in Australia and shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. but like it, it was hard. It was like all these goons guys dressed in track suits and stuff outside, yeah. like some mini mart or some shit. It Classic. must've been like 200 guys there. Like just, wow. In, in this in this rap video like it fucking looked mental and i was just like fuck i didn't know there was goons in australia but like they look like samoan and shit like, oh yeah, yeah 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 like strong guys and like they're wearing like a of like polo shirt track pants and then like their fitted cap is that no vibe? not even no. like that more just like actual like like sort of what you'd see like stormzy or someone where like actual you like what oh. you see guys here where they're wearing that sort of shit it was yeah. mental to me. I was just like, I haven't seen that shit, and I lived there for twenty seven years. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I think. I think it's beauty of the internet, isn't it? Like everything's so segregated on the internet as well. So like, yeah. if that's not your interest, you'd never fucking come across it. Never see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah but so- it, it makes me laugh that you've never even seen that in Australia. Like those kind of guys, which yeah. begs the question whether their lyrics are actually real or not, or it's just a fantasy. I mean, there's tough guys, but like, not like they don't look like that. You know what I mean? That's the main thing. The visual is the thing that I just can't... Well, I just think like it's I way too hot to wear tracksuits there as well, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've only gotten a tracksuit since I came here. It's fucking great. Tracksuits are great, Dude, yeah. it's just so comfortable when I wear, and so When I have to wear jeans... Like, I like wearing tracksuit shorts. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's some... That's some low rent shit. That's like, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, do, you, do you have some like hair on the legs as well? Or you, or yeah, yeah, I've got, no, nah, man, I've got hair on my legs. Oh, uh, fuck, there you know we go. That's yeah, what so, it is. Yeah, so I'm like, glistening. This is, <laughs> this is, this is life, right? If I, like, like, you know, I look like one of those, like my, I think my, I think I'm born to live in like LA or some shit, you know, right. where, where you just walk around with a vest and some shorts yeah, and, and a, a big, big f- fuck off four by four or some shit. And like, a big iced coffee, just huge yeah, iced coffee. Yeah, just yeah. fucking, uh. <laughs> Yeah. I used to Americano, bro. <laughs> just fucking, on my way to the gym and I'm going to bang out a fucking script. I'm listening to Joe Rogan podcast. Like oh, that man. kind of shit. I like that Joe Rogan has become so ubiquitous now. You know what I mean? Like everyone knows Joe Rogan now. And it's just, everyone knows that he talks about chimpanzees kicking and DMT. Yeah, just, just, like that's he it. He will fuck you up and then he'll do a set at the comedy store. Yeah, weird. I, 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 I find it funny that now you can go viral off of Joe Rogan or maybe like a breakfast, the Breakfast Club in America, which is another yeah. 
uh, like I say, hip hop radio show yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Don't, out, of the, out of the Breakfast Club, I've yeah. met like seven black people. I get, <laughs> I get uh, it. I've heard of it. But, but yeah, but just, like you, you can go viral off those moments. Like yeah. it's. Well, like, they're the Tonight Show now. Joe Rogan's the Tonight Show. Like, forget, yeah. forget your late night set. You got to get on Joe Rogan. That's, that's the it. that's step one. That for is it. Being a name. That is it. Like, yeah. the and you can kill your spot. Show. You can kill your podcast spot. Yeah, like, yeah, man, that was such a good spot on Joe Rogan. That two yeah, and a yeah. half hour conversation. Yeah, well, that, I mean, it really separates who's interesting and who's a fucking yeah. wet wipe. That's it, and he, and you know, and that's what people listen to. Like that'd get that'd get way more views than any like late night set. Yeah, and I think way more than Cold I think, I think nowadays. Or Fallon. I think yeah. nowadays what way is is. Excuse me. Sure. Because so many of us, okay, it's because like for example with comedy, right? Yeah. Anybody thinks they can be funny. Sure. Right. It's not like with music. Yeah. Like, I know I can't rap in it. And I know I can't make... Yeah. I know I can't play a guitar. I know I can't play the piano. I couldn't make a song that would chart, right? Sure. But I think everybody thinks they can be funny, right? Yeah. So as comics, now we're not just competing with other comedians for people's attention. We're competing with Instagrammers, YouTubers fucking just meme people meme pages yeah like yeah john down the office can do a sick meme yeah uh, exactly you know. and he's got a whole fucking page of it and he's got a million followers because he's been consistent with banging out one every day right? yeah so these are the people you're you're competing against right mm. so what people want to know is oh you're a comedian but they want to know that you're funny conversationally as well right do you see what i'm saying they want to know that you're funny that's interesting off mic I mean, like, do you, I mean, as off, in, off, off the, off, off the st- yeah, they're just like, they're like, can he, this guy, just, is this guy just funny he, or is he just reciting these jokes that he might have stolen off some dude's Twitter? There you go. Gotcha. So they, they just want to know like, yo, mm. are you the real deal? So like, if you're talking about a serious subject, but then suddenly you just do something and you're like, oh fuck, that was funny. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, they're like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, they're like, yeah. okay, I'm going to go see this guy. I like him because he can just be funny naturally. Yeah. And if he's funny naturally, then on stage. That's why crowd work clips go so viral now uh, as well. Crowd work. I mean, I, I've I got, used to hate crowd work. I've got clips. I like crowd work, but I, I don't know. I don't want, I don't watch other people's crowd work clips. So let me put it that way. Like yeah, as, you don't as a comedian, as I'm a not comedian, like, I want to fucking hear it. this shit. As a comedian, you don't watch it. But I think as audience members, they look at crowd work and like, this dude's coming up with it off the top of his head, yeah, man. This guy's a fucking genius, He's man. A fucking genius, bro. That guy's shirt is shit. Do you, like, yeah, fucking light him up, Dan. He does work in accounting. <laughs> um, do you, but that that kind of stuff, like the magic, you know, like I, I always think Russell Hicks is one of the fucking best comedians I've ever seen. Yeah. Just because I've never seen Russell Hicks do do the same thing twice never and i've known russell for years yeah 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 never yeah. seen russell just do, do the same premise twice right so it's just that yeah cuz he like it's just riffing isn't it just like he just kind and of it's, goes and with he's what's killing happening. yeah and he's ki- dude the, russell used to be on a black circuit as well right right yeah cuz you started in the on, on the urban circuit yeah, on the black circuit, circuit. Yeah. And Russ was on the urban circuit. Yeah, Russell was like so. There used to be one open mic night, right? Right. So there was this Caribbean restaurant in Angel called Cottons. Oh, right. there's one down here. Yeah, but like Cottons. This is, this is before in, it changed. This is yeah. Okay. It was Cotton, sure. it, Cottons in Islington, right? It doesn't exist anymore. But it was the weirdest thing. It was a Caribbean restaurant. Yeah. But downstairs there was a room with a stage. Oh yeah. And a and a and a, and a, and a mic and whatever. Like it looked like a real small grotty comedy club right like, it was a basement comedy club right? yeah 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 so like you you couldn't get signal in there sure that kind of vibe right but so it was like an urban circuit open mic that was yeah. the place and like and there was food there for five pounds so you could get like jerk chicken and mac and cheese yeah and also self-service pop it on a plate whatever now right. you turn up to this place right and kane brown would usually be the host sure uh K- now nah, yeah I, I would never want to follow kane brown like that guy Okay. Fucking like... Just murders? Just, just silly? Just kills. I've seen that guy kill in Edinburgh. Like, fucking for an hour, just... In Edinburgh where they don't allow black people. He's still <laughs> doing well. He's, Dude, that was one of the favorite things I've ever seen. It was like, a mate of mine, he's American. I met him over here. Um, he's like black guy, like half black, half Korean from LA. Yeah. And he like did these sets in London, did real well. And then they like got him to come to Edinburgh to do like a spot. Like it's like for a management company. And like he did it at Spank, like late night. And if you don't know Spank, it's a very like encouraging, safe space <laughs> show 
that is full of white people because it's the Edinburgh Fringe. Um, and he was just doing stuff about being black and like it was just going over their heads. Like they just couldn't, like he had like, it was, and it was so funny me watching it because I'm just like, oh no, this is going to go horribly. Just from the premise. Like one of the premises Mad. is like black people don't understand mental health. Yeah. And like talking about that. And I'm just like, dude, you are just, you are asking them to and know like so the much more than they know. Leaning, But this is what fucking annoys me about those liberal crowds. It's like, we're going to be offended on somebody's behalf, but I'll never be friends with a black person or an Asian person or whatever. I just like the idea of, in theory that <laughs> I like them. And it's just like, like <laughs> I like black people in theory. Yeah, that not in person. Yeah, but in that theory. is that is it essentially because they're the same people that will leave a restaurant if they see too many black people in it. What? Who does that? They're middle class people, middle class liberals. Are the fucking? Right. They're fucking full of shit, man. Okay. They're scared as fuck of black people and people of color. But anyway, <laughs> where I was going with this, right? Yeah. Like there was this. So like, but there'd be like three people in a crowd. Yeah. There'd be more comics trying to get on. Of course. Right, a so proper open mic, a real be like, open mic. There'll be like eight comics, yeah, right? Love it. And there'll be like three audience members, three real audience members. So we'd have to sit in the chairs and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And it was like tables, right? And you had to like, it was Wednesday nights, right? You go there Wednesday night and like r nobody is doing well. Okay. Nobody does well. Like if you did well at Cotton's, like if you, everyone would try new material, but like if a joke worked, I, I, have, I still have some jokes that I do now. <laughs> Like, and I regret that they didn't, but like, because they worked at Cotton's, I yeah. knew they were working in any room in the country and they have never failed me. They'll never stop working. They will never These stop. hundred percenters. Bulletproof. <laughs> there are three Caribbean ladies that okayed this shit. <laughs> so like, they're going to work everywhere in the fucking world, right? Yeah. So you'd go there. Everyone would die on their ass apart from Russell. Really? Russell would like, it, it could take him 25 minutes. Right. But he would be like, I'm not going off. Like until he was getting the laughs out of that room. Yeah. And, yeah, like, yeah. You get to the stage with a bar staff for laughing. Do you see where I'm coming from? So right. it was like, he would be like, ah, like, like it was just starting to a point where sometimes Kane wouldn't turn up and he'd host it. So he'd host the night. Like, right. Russell was there. Yeah. Russell would Take be hosting over. the black open mic. It was just wow. fucking mental. But yeah. And that's how good. Just but yeah, yeah. But back to the liberal shit. Yeah. I think a lot of white middle class liberal people get offended on people of color's behalf or whatever, but they never want to actually be friends with them. Yeah, I do. I find that odd because it's like, have you asked them? No, if, but if they, like... If they want your help? No, but it's... Yeah, exactly. Like like a lot of the time when I tell jokes, like I've, I've done a set sometimes like in somebody's rooms where I've told a joke about like a particular group of people or whatever. Sure. And I'm like... Let's say Somalians. <laughs> No, <laughs> but just, but like, I'll be like, dude, I'm in that culture. Like I'm with yeah. those guys. Like, do you know what I mean? I've done these jokes in front of black people and they've killed like, right. why are you now offended when all of you here probably don't even like, you, you, you're not even aware of that. Yeah, that, sure. That's space. Do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah. Is that, is that why you started in the urban circuit? Like, cause that's, that's how you came. I, so I've got some jokes about it in my hour as well, where I'm like, but I'm, I literally just thought everyone started there. Right. <laughs> in that, the urban room. It was that naiv naivety. I, yeah, I, like, yeah, yeah. It was that naivety. I literally thought that's what, cause all my friends were black when I was growing up. So I was just like, yeah, I just ended up going to a comedy night with these lot and it was just black comedy nights. And then I was like, and you didn't realize, yeah. Like, like where are all the white people? <laughs> I was like, there'd be white people there, but it right. would just be like, black comedy rooms right so you're just sure. there like all right cool so this is what it is right like you go from richard blackwood and then it's michael mcintyre <laughs> <laughs> like, like third gig in yeah, I mean? of course. So, but then um obviously after a while when i started taking it seriously i was like oh shit i gotta go to this yeah. comedy clubs and oh whatever. yeah because i was just like i was like maybe it was because you know you just felt they were getting your material better so those no well what it was to. i was i was doing shit versions of their jokes when i first started like open mic shit like yeah but i was like doing hacky shit that was terrible right but um, i mean yeah everyone's terrible everyone starts ter terrible yeah. yeah um but yeah I, it was all material geared towards a sort of that sort of urban audience and was that just because you grew up in brixton is that like yeah yeah so it was literally knew. like it was literally like yo this well, but it was more just like watching people. Oh, that's what makes them laugh. So I'll just do what makes those guys. Of course. That, so yeah. you're just like, you're doing what the successful comedians are doing. Yeah. They just happen to be black. Yeah. So then you're doing the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. And then you're realizing, hold on. Like it was as I, as I sort of started maturing and 
obviously getting into comedy, I was like, hold on, like I can't be doing that. That's not me, right? And yeah. then like you you sort of find out who you are and, and and then you go, Oh shit, this is what I should be doing and whatever and when yeah. you watch more comedy and whatever and you expand your horizons, obviously a lot more reading and stuff as well. Yeah. And you know, I'm going, Oh, okay. So <laughs> I've I've just been a culture vulture for about <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, know, you got to figure out just to like, yeah, I mean, I think as like a, as a white comedian, it's like, it's very important to graduate from talking about fast food. Yeah. Because that's, that's white hack. <laughs> well, that's so like Tinder. Always, yeah. So I was in McDonald's and it's like, ah, oh, no, like, yeah, you know, yeah, I, got, yeah. I got an old joke that's filmed and shit. It's just me talking about McDonald's for like 10 minutes. And I'm like, oh, but do you know what? I, I, I think, uh, do you know what? I was speaking to Reese James the other day. Yeah. And he was like, his first hour was on YouTube, but he took it down because it doesn't represent who he is today. Yeah. And I was like, nah, man, like keep that shit up because even though you're not, you might not be proud of it now, mm. that is a record of what you were at that time. And at that time, you thought that was the greatest shit you'd created. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and I think the, the key to, to ensuring that that doesn't represent you is mm. to ensure that you, re you release something. Yeah. After that. So my, my whole thing would be, Oh, that doesn't represent me anymore. I'm not going to take it down. I'm going to film something new. And I'm going to put that up so then people see the graduation and people see the, yeah. the levels changing. You know, it's like a musician wouldn't delete their album off iTunes. <laughs> Do you know like, what I mean? Because oh, my, my debut album wasn't great. I got rid of it. Yeah, like that that just wouldn't happen, would it? Like yeah. or I'm not I'm, I'm not really into doing that stuff anymore. Like you know, like Kanye didn't want to yeah, Jim, I was just about to say yeah. 808 and Heartbreak still there. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen. But yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? But he's not gonna go, oh, I'm 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 tired of that gospel shit I used to do, like on yeah. fucking college dropout and shit. Nah man. Not? He's not gonna go and fucking delete the college dropout off a of fucking Yeah, because it's not Imagine Eddie Murphy deleting Raw. Yeah, I'd have been insane. <laughs> no but i know what you mean and i think people get really caught up in that you know like kind of you know people like clipping stuff from their twitter and clipping stuff from their instagram just because they're like i don't want but i mean there's also a self-preservation thing with like you don't want like if something's like maybe a bit on the nose now you're like let's just dude, get rid of that one dude let's just put that one away dude, i i want to host the, the Oscars. other day let's i had just... my nine nine year twitter anniversary you know when it comes oh up? yeah yeah I, I i tweeted it and i was like i apologize for everything i've tweeted up until this point <laughs> that's a wise if, move if anybody ever gets me on anything yeah i've apologized in advance yeah like like i'm i'm done like in 2019 yo. i just want you to know dude <laughs> get rid of it i fucking hate cancel culture cancel culture yeah i mean look it's shit but but i think that we think about it too much this is no, this I'm, is this is my yeah. theory like because we're in comedy, because we got all this free time during the day, because we mainly consume like a lot of left wing media, we're like, fuck, this cancel culture is everywhere. But like, if you're just like some dude. Oh, yeah, no, but I always say that to people like, yeah. like when you're not on Twitter, the yeah. world is so much more happier place. Like, you just walk around, like, you can actually hear birds and shit. Yeah, you just look up at the sky, it's like, fuck, it's blue. This is yeah, beautiful. yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's fucking... important to not stay on Twitter. And I think, uh, yeah, you're right. A lot of people do that. Yeah. Like, they think, oh, oh my God, I've, I've been tweeting. Delete the app. Yeah, it's fine. And delete the okay. app, go back on a week later and they're sharing videos of Soldier Boy, innit? So, <laughs> <laughs> so like, so Everything's like, fine. Yeah, so you're cool, bro. Like, yeah. Just go back on and tweet your, tweet your reckless shit after that. It, it's so funny that like, I think we just forget how kind of dialed into it we are. Because like, my girlfriend went to this like, like talk because she's like, you know, fancy, right? So she goes to talks about things in public places. Um, and it was about like feminism and stuff. And they were talking about, you know, it's not my responsibility to educate you. Like, I remember that kind of thing that came out when Me Too happened. It was like, it's not my responsibility to educate you. Like, you go know, and research, go and go read research a book, yourself. Yeah. yeah. And she was like, I just can't believe this shit. Like, you know, that's such a dumb like thing to say. Like, of course, you got to educate people like to a degree if you wanted to change the thing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. She's a very reasonable lady. Um, but the thing that I found funny was like, oh, you haven't heard that yet? That was like two <laughs> years ago. Like, this isn't even a new thing. Like, but then you yeah, like, wait, hold oh. on. You paid for a court, for a talk yeah. to see that shit. To hear this thing that I was like, but this is about. what I've said to a lot of people. Like, and I think a lot of activists that you see that are always very dismissive of men or whatever, or yeah. whatever. And I'm like, dude, like, you're, you don't want change. Yeah. You don't want change. What you like is the fact that you can monetize your outrage and ensure that it gets you to a certain platitude because you can sell out tour shows yeah, you can yeah, sell yeah. out this you can sell out this talk you can sell out that talk off the basis of being the angry person waving their hand 
if tomorrow all of society's issues were addressed, you would have no selling point. And yeah. you would be back to fucking working in so in like wherever. Right, yeah. right? You're so, monetizing it in the same way that any company would monetize. Exactly. You're worse anything. than the corporations because you're going at least we know the corporation are a piece of shit. Like yeah. McDonald's ain't lying about their burgers, innit? <laughs> no, but like real talk, like McDonald's yeah. are like, yo, it's a burger, innit? Yeah. Like it's a burger. It's a burger. It's 99p. You don't know where the made They're comes from. They're now possibly made of 100% hamburger uh, meat, innit? So whatever in it, like, do you want it or not? And you're like, I'm loving it, right? So, <laughs> or like, you know, KFC, same thing, right? It's, yeah. it's a fucking bucket of chicken. You go there, it's finger licking good, right? Yeah. I fucking love this shit, right? Yeah. So, for, uh, I forgot my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, an activist isn't yeah, saying- an activist- They're not saying what they're doing. Yeah. They're being like, I'm here for justice. And that justice costs $10 in person. You can get 15 yeah. if you want to sign book. Yeah. Like, yeah it's yeah. fucked, right? Like, yeah, yeah, we yeah. all know the corporations are a piece of shit. We know KFC is a piece of shit. They're feeding us crap and whatever. Yeah. But we go there because it's convenient. It's nice and whatever, right? Sure. An activist telling us like, yeah, fuck man and fuck this and fuck that and whatever. And you're like, because I've been on like tons of talks about masculinity and talking about feminism and stuff. And I've always said the whole thing is... You cannot talk about feminism without talking about masculinity. Sure. Like, if if you really want a solution for feminism, you have to talk about masculinity. And people are like, oh, you know, but you're trying to bring men into... It's like, no. The, way, the reason I say we should talk about masculinity is because mm. if in order for you to want to change men's attitude towards women, then you have to address what it is about masculinity that makes men feel those things about women. Yeah, sure. Do you see what I mean? You have to redefine a lot of these things for the people in order for, to give them a space to grow, in order to give them a say. And yeah. also, there's a saying in Kurdish where uh, it's, I'll say it in Kurdish, which, which means with nice words, a snake comes out of a hole, right? Right. Right, so... Me trying to poke a stick at a snake or whatever yeah. doesn't mean it's come up. I'm like, here, come here, come here, come here. Right, oh, yeah, man. yeah. Snake's going to come out. It's going to try and play with me, whatever, right? Yeah. So for You want to get the snake out of the hole. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah. I was like, why but are we for, bringing the yeah, snake but, out of the but, hole? But for, like, the, the whole idea behind it is yeah. you can convince me much more by going, like, say I'm like, Dan, I don't agree with what you're fucking saying, you piece of shit. Yeah. You're never going to have a chat with me. But if I'm like, yo, Dan, like, can I, can I go for a coffee with you? I just saw some stuff you tweeted. Mm. I don't really agree with a lot of it, but I just want to have a chat and see where your head's at. Yeah. You'd be like, all right, fine, fuck it. Yeah, yeah I'll go for it. sounds very reasonable. Do you see what I'm coming from? But yeah. the problem we have now is everyone's like, fuck, fuck, <laughs> fuck, fuck you, fuck him, fuck yeah, her, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And then you end up in a situation where it's like, this is my book on how we say fuck people. <laughs> and this is my tour show on how to say fuck people. And this is my article on how to say fuck boy. this yeah. is my column this is my ted talk this is my this that and then yeah it's not a solution it's just literally like fuck yeah because i think people kind of have that like they've seen like the newsroom and they think journalists are like all honorable and shit and it's like no man they're just trying to make money they're just trying to, everyone's trying to make like, money just when, like a comedian says something like super outrageous they're just trying to be relevant again that's Absol all it is my like, whole thing is overthink it everyone's a piece of shit in it <laughs> And once you realize the baseline for everybody is a piece of shit, yeah. right? Like there's exceptions in it. Like there's exceptions like, yeah. uh, to, to the rule. But like on a baseline, most people are a piece of shit and only give, give a shit about themselves. Mm. So once you learn once you learn that and then you're like, oh, okay, like he said some shit. Maybe it was, yeah. was that a line, but okay, cool. Like, but that was when? Oh, like five years, like. That I say five years ago, right? Yeah. It was interesting. Recently, there was, um, they tried to get this person cancelled uh, for a football channel, football YouTube channel. A right? football YouTube channel? Yeah. A vi uh, like, I can't believe you're cancelling YouTube channels. That's when, that's no, no, no. There was a presenter banner. on there they, tried, they, uh. they got rid of, right? Because a rival TV company had found tweets he'd said about women's football. Right. A few years beforehand, right? Before yeah. Before yeah, he worked yeah. for that organization. And it was like stuff where we were saying women's football shit and like women shouldn't be playing football and this nonsense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which he apologized for and everything and whatnot. And you could quite clearly see the guys changed, right? It sure. Was, that it wasn't the person, but they got rid of him. Mm. What well, one of his friends then went and was like, oh, okay, you're going to get my friend canceled. He found all the tweets from all the journalists that work for that other publication. Yeah that was misogynistic, racist, homophobic, whatever. Right. And I was like, okay, since we're playing this game, 
boom, 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 get you cancelled now. Boom, boom, tweeting it. And it's like, actually, if we look within us, and then somebody was like, somebody even tweeted him, tweeted his friend saying, ah, oh, but like it was wrong what he said. And then he went and found this guy's old tweets as well. And he's like, and he's like, all right, fair enough. I'm a hypocrite and a piece of shit. Like, if you look that, if you look at it, right, mm. I could get you on something. Say, for example, you get me on something misogynistic, right? Sure. But if I go back and I'm like, all right, let me just see on your Twitter and I go racism or whatever, like fine. Yeah. And I catch you on something like that. And it's like... I like that you went with me, racism with you, misogyny. But just, just, yeah. just if we were guessing. Just yeah. if we were guessing. <laughs> no, just no. based on who we are as people. <laughs> you look a bit... Ra- you are look, yeah, no, no, you, know, you don't look no, racist, no. but I'm just... This is just hypothetical. Yeah, I'm just yeah. with you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But like I could quite... Like what have we achieved at that point, right? Well, that's... This is the thing. Because the left did it. Like the left did the cancel thing being like, we're coming from a good place. Yeah. We really believe this shit. And then the right saw that and was like, oh, this is great. And then like, we'll just weaponize it and get people canceled on the left. You know what yeah. I mean? Like the left were like, we're doing the right thing. This is for saving the world. And the right are like, we're doing this to get rid of this fucking cunt. Yeah. Like that's what yeah. we're doing. It's, and it's, it's, it doesn't, it's not good. It's nothing not good for achieved, anybody. Nobody achieves anything. And yeah. I think what, it, what I think, I think I, I, I struggle with how kids these days are going to grow up because it, it, it you're sort of encouraging a culture where you're like you can't make mistakes yeah it's and weird, you, isn't it and you've got to the, it's, well the thing is like you can make mistakes but never admit you've made a mistake you know what i mean that's the only way to get by getting canceled well so this is the thing like i apologize for nothing fuck them yeah that's what i was saying that's the worst lesson ever that's what i that's what i was saying to one of my friends i was like if some shit comes out about me on, on Twitter or anything, I think I'll just upload a meme going, fuck you guys, motherfucker, and yeah, lot of some yeah, shit. Yeah. And then I'll just go about my business, delete the app for a day. Yeah. Like, don't back down. Like, that's the yeah. worst thing you can do. And, yeah. and that's weird. Like, contrition is Bill bad. Bill Burr talks about that. He's like, why are you apologizing? You're a comedian. Like, yeah, just like, do it. Just go hard. If Chappelle ever apologized for a joke, I think I'd like quit comedy. That'd be it. He hasn't, has he? I think he's been good so far. No, he hasn't apologized because he's no. like... My intention wasn't that. You've fucking... Yeah. Well, I don't know. Even when he tried to adjust the whole trans thing. Yeah. He'd done it in material. And yeah, he just like did it on stage. That's the thing. Do it on stage. I don't... The one thing... But yeah, you can't be an open micer doing some shit. I've seen like people try... Like Frankie Boyle can get away with a lot more than an open mic comic can. Of course, because they've yeah. got context for yeah. Frankie Boyle. Exactly. Open mic no context. Just like some guy. Some guy talking about being a pedophile and you're like, dude, that's not funny. Yeah, I saw a guy on stage the other day and he was like, yes, this uh, Arabic woman came up to me and was like, (laughs) and I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) Like, that was like last week. Where were you gigging? Kent? Nah, man, Europe. I'm not going to say where because it might be obvious to who it was, but fuck. Like in, and like people were kind of chill with it. And like the thing that I find funny is like Europe looks at England like they're animals. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, these fucking cattle living in the UK. But if you did that here, you would be booed off, I think. Like, whereas there, they were just kind of like... Depends <laughs> where in the country, to be honest with you. You reckon? Do you, do you cop some heat? Being a, being a man of Arabic appearance? Is that, a, is that a fair shout? Do you know what? I've, I've had anything from like South American all the way up to Afghanistan. Like if we're looking... Right. So... People don't know. Once it, once it gets to Russia, it stops. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that, that's where people's geography stops. Yeah. Uh, it is like, yeah, like, it's not, definitely not Portuguese? There. Spanish? Yeah. Like Italian? Uh, yeah, you get pretty much anything. Oh, okay. Syrian? No, and then they're just going through Arab nations and then they go through like Iranian? No, okay. Um, well, that's, you got a great trick because like no one's going to pick like a region. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're not, it's not even like a nation on its if, own. If, I, if my name was like Alvarez, yeah. like, I don't think you'd bat an eyelid. No, You'd be like, all. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, okay. Like, didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, yeah, with me at airports, like I'll get the explosive swab like pretty often. Oh, is it? Yeah, just because, like, if I get, like, a little bit of a tan going, like, I'm just kind of, like, you know, hairy enough. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are just kind of like, oh, But you've got that, like, sort of look as well where you're like, oh, I just don't care kind of thing, like... Yeah. Yeah, so... But, like, like Nonchalant, apathy? isn't it? Nonchalant. A, a nonchalant look. Yeah, you're just like... And it's, it's a very white thing where you can afford <laughs> to be like that, do you know what I mean? Like, I could turn up to the airport looking like shit and, like... Of course, I'm gonna get on this plane. You are absolutely. <laughs> 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 that 
That is so true. <laughs> like, the amount of lip I give people when I get the swab, man. Just like, you know, no, everyone else would be like respectful. Like, oh yeah, yeah no, like, uh, no, not, everything's fine. And I'm <laughs> How like, dare Are you? you? Fucking serious? <laughs> Unhand <laughs> me, you brute. Do you not know who I am? I've come from Australia. <laughs> Dude, I'm just, yeah, I straight up mouth off. Like, just like, really, man? Like, you don't think I've got a flight to catch? Like, you got to send it through again. That like, is you know. fucking... Uh, oh, it's privileged, dude, and it's awesome. Like, you know, you got to enjoy the... But you know you what? I get. like guys like you. Like, I, I said this to Tom Lucy, because I was like... I like guys that don't I've got to go, hey, sorry, guys, um, I'm white. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for that, whatever. Yeah. But, like, just go... Yeah, I'm white. Yeah, it's great. But like, obviously, yeah. there's there's some shit we've done. and yeah, yeah, there's some issues. Yeah, there's some issues. But don't start apologizing for it and shit. But, but then, you know, by the same token, don't go the whole white is best and white no. is right and like whatever. You've got to be a sweet spot. Just understand that there's a... like like That's what I like about Tom. He, he recognizes there's privilege, but he's not going to go, oh my God, like, I am so sorry yeah. for being white. Like, it is such... A travesty that I am the way that. But that's like so condescending. It that's is. Like, it's, fucking, that's like, it's like you're lying. You're, I know you're fucking lying. But to it's me. also like I'm going to you, being like, "Hey, man, I know this shit's working out way better for me, but I want you to know that I feel bad about that." Oh, well, but you know what? <laughs> it's, like, it, it's probably not working out better yeah, for me. It's, yeah, it's but you know, fine. do you know what else it is as well? It's like you're going over and going, "Hey, man, I know they're the bad guys." But I'm the nice one out of them, man. Uh, and it's just like, yeah. off oh, the moment you. I'm start, one of the good ones. Yeah, like the moment you start doing that shit, I'm like, I do not trust this guy. <laughs> He's fucking sold out his own people. <laughs> like, you know I mean? it's all fucking bullshit, right? Yeah. Just, just be normal. Like, that's what it's so funny because, like, when you get like the white guy that hangs around with the black guys, you're always like. Mm. The, he doesn't mention the fact he's white. He's just there. Like, do yeah. you know what I mean, it's just. He's, He's just talking. Yeah. To you as a human being. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's then when it's like, but is that what you guys, like, you know when you yeah. get that sort of stuff. Sorry, is that a black thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, you guys ordered an entree and mains. <laughs> and you asked them to come out at the same time. Is that a black thing? <laughs> yeah. Just wanted to check. Just every question about it. Like, yeah. like fuck off, man. No, yeah, because yeah, like, I'm mates with like, uh, Luiso Gola. Like, Luiso's African fucking amazing. I love Luiso. He's the best. Yeah. I just like, yeah, it's just, it's funny because like, I know I annoy him sometimes because like, we hang out enough that I'm like, but no, seriously though, is that a black thing? <laughs> just, <laughs> like, just dude, man, I was sitting in this. Uh, what I love about Luiso, he would be like, dude, you know what I fucking I was thinking of the other day? Like, he'd just be sat there going, yeah. Yo, why is mayonnaise mayonnaise? Like, it would be, <laughs> be some like fucking weird question in it. Luiso would be like, yo, dude, like, yeah. Why do we call it this? You know, you're like, like, you, or he would ask you like some deep philosophical question while you're just walking and you're like, bro, like, just out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, that's his thing. It's just I love like, it's just like, man, like, how long do you reckon we've been eating tomatoes? And you're like, what? yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you'd be like, D like, like, you ask him, dude, why are you vegan? And you're like, do you eat chicken? <laughs> and you'll be like, yeah. Have you ever thought about how much chickens are being killed? Just walk down this street right now. <laughs> He's like, look at the amount of restaurants yeah now how many of them are eating chicken <laughs> and then he would just have you and you're like yeah 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 fuck i'm a piece of shit love louis so man's mind works incredibly yeah and it's uh it's really funny because that it's that different perspective you know like south africa like that does give you yeah, a different perspective yeah, yeah. but you know you can say like we've got the washing on behind you here and like when he came on for the podcast he was just like man it looks like a refugee camp in here yeah <laughs> And I'm like, what? And it's like the washing. <laughs> Just like, right. Yeah, the no, washing. I would never think about that. I would never, I would never know what a refugee camp looks like, right? Like yeah, from yeah, where yeah, I grew yeah, up, yeah, I'd yeah. never be like, oh, this looks like where refugees hang out. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like that interesting perspective. And like, that's why I think this is interesting because like, you know, I try to get people on from different places to yeah, talk yeah. about the UK. Yeah. Because like your like understanding of this is like so different to like Michael Legg is from Northern Ireland. Right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He's not like, He's not hanging out with all black people. And no, the, no, no. Yeah. And just but that's like, the thing. Like, yeah, well, I'm, I'm an ethnic minority within an ethnic minority a lot of the time. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, because like, I'm, I'm not the white guy. I'm the Kurdish guy. And like, a, lot of them, a lot of my friends that have been my friends for like, still don't have a fucking clue what Kurds really are. They were just hearing it. And like, oh, you guys fight an ISIS, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Like that, <laughs> that kind of shit, right? But you they guys just have a good PR team, like Kurdish yeah. people. It's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're fighting ISIS Do right we? now. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's. But like it's it's so funny because like my I can I've always felt like I be I've been a chameleon because of 
Mm. Obviously, if you don't have a country, but I'm British and I very much see myself as British and English. Yeah, it's more, like more. first and foremost. Yeah, Kurt, but I very much see myself Kurdish as well. It's, it's weird. I feel like mixed race, if that makes sense. Like, I'm yeah. Kurd, like, it feels like I've got one parent that was English and one parent that was Kurdish. Whereas, yeah, both of them. Not, both of them was Kurdish. But <laughs> it feels like. you grew up. Yeah, yeah. Because you came real young. Six months old. Six months, yeah. Six so like months. That's, that's very young. Like, do you have any memory of like. No, none. like. Yeah. But we, we, I've gone back plenty of times, but it oh, was just. Cool. Yeah, but it's just like being. But do you uh, feel like do you feel like London more than British? Like I think that's yeah, like London. A very that's London, a very UK London, thing. Manchester, and maybe Leeds. Or something. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like the bigger cities. Yeah, like it's not the other shit. It's yeah, like, like no, actually, London, Manchester, Cardiff, like those big cities, cool. Yeah, but like when I go Birmingham or like I don't like Birmingham at all. Don't like Birmingham. I fucking hate Birmingham. <laughs> What's wrong with Birmingham? I love the people. Yeah. Just that city, man. It is quite a great place. I love place. Brummies. I hate Birmingham. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. I kind of, I like dig Birmingham in the sense like it's kind of got the like ethnicity that like reminds me of Sydney a little bit. Like when I walk around, there's like different bi- different areas, different bits. Okay. And like, and it's like kind of like very much that in that area, very much this in that area. And then like, there's like just some white people scattered everywhere. Okay. And that reminds me of home. Because okay. that's what Sydney's like. like. You know, everyone's got a little bit. And, and then, then just there's Sri Lanka. And then it's just... <laughs> yeah, no, just like, you know, like... Yeah, it was really funny. There was a politician. Uh, he's like, no, the PM. I think it was the prime minister. Um, we abbreviate everything. Uh, anyway, sorry. That's like just Australian, like fucking everything. His name's Scott Morrison, but we call him ScoMo. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like team A. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Anyway. Did um, you do that with uh, um, uh, swimming... Uh, Torpedo? Yeah, there you go. Ian yeah. Thorpe. Ian Thorpe. Fuck, yeah. there's a cultural reference. Ian yeah. Thorpe. Ian Thorpe. Um, the king. Uh, but no, he like it was in Strathfield, and there was like an Asian lady, like Asian is in Australian, say Asian. So like East Asian here is that? Yeah. 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 Um, and he went up to her and he's like Ni Hao, and she's like I'm Korean. Oh for fuck's <laughs> sake! But anyone from Sydney, like from where I live in Sydney, would know that in Strathfield it's mainly Korean. And you'd know it's like it's Anyong Haseo, right? Like you just you'd know that. Whereas like this guy grew up like kind of in like the That's southern mad, bit, which yeah, is real yeah. white, and it's just like Ni Hao. It's like Ni that, Hao, <laughs> <laughs> and that's Australia. Like that's Australia in a nutshell. Like goodish intentions, but kind of fucking it up. You know what I mean? We're not landing. So the plane. how did you how did you feel about that Egg Boy? Loved Egg Boy. I felt good about Egg Boy. Yeah. You didn't like Egg Boy. No, I, 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 I thought it was funny, yeah. but I always like go, this shit doesn't achieve anything. I'm very much, I always very much look at the big picture and I'm like, it doesn't achieve anything. Yeah. I mean, I think it was just. And he got pounced on, which was like, I'm like, and the other thing is fucking choked out in a headlock boy. Yeah. By five guys. And like my mate got a photo with him because like, he's and no like... burgers. It was mental. <laughs> <laughs> no, just like my mate got a photo with him. Um, cause he's like, he, like he's a big comic and stuff and the guy wanted to meet him or whatever. He's tiny. Like he's like, yeah, I reckon Egg Boy's like five seven. Fucking hell, and man. five guys were just fucking grabbing him. I thought he was like, you know, just decent size, but no, he's like no. five seven, man. He was Jesus, brave. Yeah, the guy looked at him, come here, you little fucking. Critter. I was like, okay, well. This what is- about that thing where he like just fucking swings at him like twice? The best egg oh. in I ever saw was John Prescott. He was a uh, deputy prime minister at the time, right? And someone dashed an egg at him. He turned around straight away, right hook. Wow, straight away. Like <laughs> John Prescott was about his life. He was from Hull. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hull, yeah. yeah growing up from tough Hull. In Hull. He literally just turned around, instant reaction, bang in the face, like kind of thing. It wasn't like <laughs> there wasn't any thinking about it or anything. I was, and that made me go, I'd have him run the country. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Like I'm just like, like put him in a room with Putin. He's gonna put up a fight in it. Yeah. This man can make decisions quickly. Yeah. He's like ruthless. Like That's what we need right now. Exactly. Like if, <laughs> like Ed Miliband would get bullied in a in a room with Putin in it. Yeah. Oh man, I do, I do not. I've checked out of British politics. I My whole say. thing, like people often tell me, like, oh yeah, but you can't think of politics that way. And I'm like, no, I 100 percent do, right? Because mm. I'm from the Middle East, right? I have to res- a lot, and and the thing is, I I see how these people act. Like pe- in a lot of these countries, they have to respect you as a man first and foremost for them to even respect you as a head of state. Right. That, that 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 part of like Middle East and not just Middle East, but a lot anywhere. of those other countries, right? Like Russia, I mean, yeah, there's like, a reason Putin keeps wrestling the bears. Exactly, like, it like, clearly is important to exactly. His image. He yeah. has to 
they a lot of countries in the world and we just go in the no it's not important but it is right yeah because they want to see that they can respect you as a man like you're for want of a better word the alpha male sure you're a leader yeah you're a and leader for them like to be able to yeah masculine qualities yeah. exactly in yeah, yeah yeah it's still like like as much as people love to go like hey everything's great like, yeah patriarchy and a lot of those ideals that we pretend don't exist still exist like there's a shit ton of homophobia in this country but people have to just act like it doesn't exist yeah there's a shit ton of racism whatever but people go no it's okay it's, everything's great it's yeah. amazing you can be gay it's great whatever yeah. Yeah. And you're it's like same. no man just speak to a gay person when he leaves brighton or <laughs> london no honestly and it's yeah. like they're not having a great time right they can't yeah. openly go out and start kissing can't hold hands in the street no, exactly in hal to bring up hal again yeah yeah but no honestly <laughs> yeah. like it would be difficult for them, right? But yeah. I just don't like the way people act like all of this shit is, is, isn't, isn't a thing. Well, I mean, that's, I think, kind of coming back to your point about these white people taking behalf, uh, sorry, offense on behalf of people that never yeah. met. Like, you bringing it up is ruining their day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they yeah. don't want to live in that. Yeah, 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 so yeah. So you're yeah. mentioning it to like, hey, fuck you, man. Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. live in a racist world. And it's yeah. like, yeah, because everyone you know is white. Like, yeah. it's, it's yeah. easier. Exactly. Not a lot of racism in Iceland. Exactly. There's fucking only white people, all right? <laughs> exactly. It's simple. Exactly. But, uh. um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of that stuff, I'm just like, I don't know. What were we talking about? Fuck, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> you missed I'm it. Tired. No, we're talking about just mask. Like you got to yeah, prove mask- yourself sorry, as a yeah, man there we go. in politics. Ma- there you go, man. Masculinity. Sorry, I don't know what is into me today. I'm usually very good. Um, <laughs> the fucking yeah, they have to respect you as a man first and foremost. So yeah, we go ask. That's why a lot of the time I think if Corbyn was on the world stage, we'd be we'd be fucked. Right, because he doesn't possess those. They they look at him and go qualities. like like I don't I can't, like I don't imagine him having a strong grip when I'm having when I'm shaking his hand. Sure. And that's <laughs> that's important to you. That, that's important. Like the handshake that, test. Yeah, you need do that. Do you see where I'm coming from? Everyone was yeah. like, oh, you got a strong grip. And I'm like, I just, like, I just, like, I was just taught that way. Do you see where I'm coming yeah. from? So it's like, you go to a lot of these countries and whatever, they're not going to respect us. If we're, it's part of the reason why Trump's in power. Right. Because they look at him and it's like, even though he's a prick, he's still got that whole... Well, the prick is a leader. It's very rarely just a beta prick. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like he's got that kind of <laughs> attitude where you like, you know, like strong handshake shit. Yeah. Like you can imagine him like going up to Putin, not giving a shit, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Or whatever. And like, that's, and people, people respect that. Like people they, might not yeah. want to admit it, but the fact that you see Donald Trump and Putin, even though the way that it's played out, it seems like, no, like it wasn't, it was Putin kind of helping him out and like he wasn't dominating yeah, him. Yeah. But the idea of him in a room, he's not being like, Oh, thank you so much, Vladimir. It's a pleasure to be yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It would just be like, yo, Vlad, what's going on? Like, I passed yeah. me a cigarette. Can we, that kind of thing. Can we exploit the world some more? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Can we make it happen, can we Vlad? Make it, how can we fuck this shit up even more? Yeah. But that is my point. Like, whereas in a lot of other respects, if they see a sort of like, hi, mm. hello. But do you, do you think like growing up in a Kurdish family, in a from a people that have had to struggle a long I've had time. to know about politics since I was five years old. Yeah, and you just and it just kind of made you a bit more realistic. Yeah. Because like, I, I'm sure like any nation that's kind of trying to get independence has been a lot of promises well, it's and not more, a lot of it's delivery. More so, it's more so understanding... Um, so it's easy to blame other countries and stuff as well, right? Sure. Right? But it's also... Understand, I What it's showed me more than anything, understanding the mistakes that previous leaders have made in the past as well right in order for us to be in that situation um and 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 the disunity and stuff that 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 exists amongst kurds mm. in a lot of respects because um, there's like i was look there's 40 million they reckon yeah, Kurdish yeah. people worldwide yeah and like in in like those groups everyone's quite the different political parties and stuff and yeah. the way people support political parties is sort of like football teams right it's imbued. Yeah, so like... It's forever. They, like, you're from this political party, your mm. son is going to vote that way as well. Right. Is that, you reckon, really yeah, typical? Like, yeah, so like, like okay. if you go on, like, election time, is like the Champions League. Right. Do you think in this country as well? Or do you think, like, mainly, like... No, nah, this was... To, this you're talking back home. Kurds, yeah, yeah. cool. So, it, it, so, it was sort of... It sort of gave me a very realistic view from a very young age, where mm. I was like what people are actually like right people are creatures of habit yeah and people don't really like looking people people like looking to someone to do some shit for them Mm -hmm. rather than actually go out and be the change they want to be for themselves sure so 
in this country, I think a lot of us like the idea of stuff being good. <laughs> but you're like, oh, I can't have plastic straws anymore. My life is shit now. Right. So you think here, even like the littlest thing and people mm. are like, we're fucked. Sacrifices. There is no fucking way. Yeah. People here like making sacrifices. Like it's. They, these guys aren't fighting ISIS on the front line no, for their freedom. I'm not fighting ISIS on the front line. We like, yeah. it's, it, like, it's very hard in a way. Like we, we are fucking hit. We've fucking hit the jackpot, man. Mm. Living here. Mm -hmm. Like, no matter how shit it can be, right? Your shittest day, you're ordering Uber Eats. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I know exactly what you mean. You, like, there's a, there's a, there's the a. Worst day, you feel terrible. You're like, this is fucked. I'm not leaving the couch. Let me select from a hundred restaurants. <laughs> but, <laughs> to but, bring it to my door. Look at any joke that any comic in this country talks about where they're talking about being depressed and disheveled. And they're like, you're just sat there with a pizza <laughs> or you're sat there with a kebab in your hand. And you're like, dude, yeah. that. You st you still had to go out and somebody else had to make that food for you. Yeah. Or you got it delivered to you, right? So even within your worst moment, there is an element of privilege. And yeah. and, and you know, like, like it's not like it was my worst day. I hadn't eaten for three days. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm sharing an onion between four people. Yeah, I was getting beaten by like <laughs> three men. Like, do you know what I mean? I hadn't seen sunlight in four days. It it's literally like I was yeah. sat in my flat. Depressed, <laughs> probably on a couch. Like, yeah, not even yeah. a hardwood chair. Yeah, <laughs> on a couch, <laughs> depressed, and I had a pizza. Yeah, I want a pizza becomes synonymous for it. It's like, oh, yeah, dude, yeah, he had a pizza, and he he might have been hungover. Oh, yeah. so you were enjoying yourself the night before? Yeah, that's so funny. It's, I'm it, gonna I'm gonna think about that every time. <laughs> I get a pizza from now on, just like sitting on the couch being like, fuck. Yeah, but like, it's like when people, like, it's honestly like, man, I've been through so many like mental health issues as in terms of like, I, I went through like severe bouts of depression mm. to a point where like, I really wanted to end, it, end the whole thing, right? Yeah. But it, it coming back from that and learning to just be grateful and just mm. to put things into perspective, not comparing, but just putting things into perspective. So like, yeah. it's like, I've got problems obviously, but what do I have right now? Like, and then mm. you're like, oh boom, I've got this, this, and this, and yeah. this. Like, it's like got you a said, yeah, there's a couch. There's a fucking couch. Like yeah. who would kill? F My bed cost me a thousand pounds. I bought it on finance, but it cost me a thousand pounds. Must like, be a good bed memory It's fan. a fucking amazing bed. <laughs> it's a fu like, I was like, I, I was having like, back problems and stuff so i changed my bed and whatever but i was like yeah. i spent a third of my life on this shit i might as well just enjoy invest it. in it and it's like you, there's people that sleep on the floor bro yeah in london like near yeah you can I, from where i live i could probably throw something to someone's house where it is not dude just nice. just how many homeless people do you see in london on a daily basis oh we got our group down there there's about tons eight of them. tons yeah to the point where now you just they're just a feature of your day they're not like you, you've dehumanized them Absolutely. And like, and that's gross. But like, yeah, you can't like you can't give money to every single one every single time. But like and you can't engage with it either. But if someone was like in a media, right? OK, we can have to do two things, right? Like a mm. leader comes out, right? Yeah. UK, whatever, Labour, whatever. Right, man. We've only got money for one of these policies. Mm. We can either give everybody 200 pounds a week just for living. Mm hmm. We can eradicate homelessness. Yeah. I am picking the 200 pounds. <laughs> Look, man, honestly, that would... Not, but not me, not just me. Most people are picking the 200 pounds yeah. a week for doing jack shit. Well, the, I think the fun thing with that is like if there was a list at the end. <laughs> it's like, then this is what everybody chose. <laughs> yeah. Like there is a record of it. Yeah, yeah, it goes yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then... At that point, you see homeless people on the streets and it's just like they can look you up and go, oh, that's yeah. a piece of shit. Though. That's the thing. Like You walk past homeless people and like, can I have some changes? Like, you'll see, actually, I voted to eradicate homelessness. Uh, no change for you. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Catch like, uh, but it, people are selfish. Yeah. And, and it's okay. 
You know what I mean? To an extent. That's the thing. To an extent. Like, people would be like, that's insane. You gotta... And just I used like, to be very selfish. And then, like... Really? You've chilled out a bit. What'd I've, you get? Like, religion? What'd you, what'd you get? No, I became less religious. But it less was religious. more like... Okay. Um, I think it's more just when you, when you get to a place where you're really severely depressed and you come out of it, you're just mm. like, dude, none of this shit fucking matters. I could die tomorrow. Like, what? Oh, I'm not yeah. letting somebody have, like my last chip or what do you know what I mean like, <laughs> like but you see where I'm coming from like that's yeah. a very like small example but it's if you put it, everything into context you're like if you if you understand that everything is fleeting and this everything mm. can go away and whatnot like this is my like I've seen so many people die of a young age recently especially in entertainment and stuff right yeah I'm like fuck like the, on the outside they could have had it they had it all right but mm. it was just taken away from them and yeah and, and you've you, kind of come to terms with that it's like your do, you, do you, your parents still around? Yeah, yeah. Like, do you, you still close relationship? Parents? Yeah, well, yeah, fairly. Yeah. Did they like? Did they like help you with like the depression stuff? Or did like? Because they, they first. Nah, man. Nah. That's man. what I mean. Like they first... didn't even fucking know about most of it. Right? Really? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, you don't you don't bother your parents with that shit, man. And my parents would just be like, just be happy. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> just like, do you know what I mean? like, why are you? Sad? My dad would kind of be like, why are you sad? Like, there's there's kids your age fighting ISIS. There's people like, yeah, I was wondering you know I mean? if they were going to that you kind that. of thing, isn't it? Like, oh, my dad would be like, at your age, I was running at tanks, right? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Not from at tanks. So you'll be like. Okay, cool. Like my dad, yeah. by my age, already had had mustard gas poisoning and lost half a lung. Right. Wow. Do you see where I'm coming from? So like, it's kind of hard to be like, yeah. I just don't feel. Fulfilled. I just don't feel like I'm getting like, like I'm doing twenties at most clubs in the country, but it's just like, <laughs> what about like TV work? <laughs> like, shut the fuck up! Like, yeah, it's a petty complaint by comparison. So, like, when you put things into perspective like that, you're like, you yeah. know what, man? But then you can be like, hey, mum and dad, this is how good a job you've done as parents. You've given me Western... No, my parents think I'm a failure. Depression. I'm not a fucking what? doctor. I'm not a fucking... But you've gone into the arts. That's above doctor and shit. They don't understand that That's shit. That's the highest right? This is they the highest that point. Shit. They don't understand that shit, we right? The luxury. Like, I had a sold-out comedy club two days ago come yeah. to see me, right? Yeah. They come to see me. I didn't tell my parents about it. What do you mean you didn't tell your parents? I didn't fucking tell my parents about it. Right? How could you not tell your parents? I didn't tell my parents about that shit. I don't even think they know about it, right? My, I, I don't like. You got siblings? Yeah, like Did I don't even know? think they tell. Yeah, they came. They, they were okay. at the show. Like, but it's one of those things where like my parents would be like, "Does that mean you're famous yet?" <laughs> That's so funny. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'll be yeah. like, "Oh, so you're gonna get paid for it?" Well, no, I actually spent my own money to get it recorded. Yeah, but are you gonna sell it? What's gonna happen with it? No, I just might put it out. Why? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it was when trying to ins I explain the concept of Edinburgh to my parents was like, yeah. I'm not even gonna try. I'm gonna go to here for a month to lose money. But I'm going to spend ten grand. It might make me famous one day, but I have to pay off that ten how long grand will it take? over four years. Yeah, how long will it take? Maybe about ten years. But <laughs> it's an investment. Don't get yeah. it. They don't get That's it. My dad will be like, invest in bricks and mortar, invest in yeah. in a business. And you're like, uh, do, do I, can't, I can't give the Jay-Z line. I, I'm not a business man. I'm a business man. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. There's none of that shit. They're like, what does that mean? <laughs> That's funny. So what do your parents do? Do they have kind of regular jobs? My parents have sort of moved back there now. So Are they back? Yeah, yeah. They don't live in... Yeah, yeah. So ah. they'll, they'll come back here uh, every so often. But my dad was a minicab driver here. Right. Yeah. That was his gig. Yeah. Um, um, and over there, he's he's got a couple houses and stuff, so he rents them out and stuff. But oh, cool! Yeah, my mom was a uh, she worked a nursery teacher. Nursery teacher, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. but they, when did they go back? Like recently? A few years ago, man. Yeah. Years. But like, they'll come back and visit. Like, they'll spend a summer mm. here sometimes because like the summer over there is unbearable. Right, we're talking like 45, 40 yeah, degrees. 45 yeah, degrees. Some Australian temperature, sun. Yeah, yeah it's sick. like it's like dry but, too. Ooh. Yeah, fucking humid and yeah, yeah and you're like. It, it's it's not nice like when i've been back at times and it's been that hot like i've been like mm. whoa because obviously as well though like because it's landlocked yeah a lot of time there might be like droughts and stuff so water's not you don't waste water mm. so it's not like everybody can have like three showers a day yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. I, like when it's hot here it'll be like 27 degree here i'll have about three showers right because <laughs> i'm like i'm not stinking if i go outside but like yeah you think about it, like someone like they're trying to preserve the water. They can only have a shower that one. Yeah. So no, you're going outside. Like people are stinking and shit. And you're like, 
Fuck. Do you, do you feel like a foreigner when you go back? Do you know what's so funny? Because my parents made sure I could speak Kurdish right. fluently. Yeah. When I go back, they think I've just like gone back there a couple. I've I've gone to London like two years ago or so. Right. So I'll go there and I'm speaking in Kurdish. They're like, how long have you been there? But like, ah, about six months. But they were, <laughs> <laughs> they were like, oh really? Have you learned the language? I'm like, so so. Yeah. Like that kind of thing. But they they don't even have a clue. It's until my cousins or someone will be like, yeah, he's from Europe, and they'll be like. Oh, right. he's an outsider. Like there's a word called Khadiji, which means outsider. Right. It, it's not like a negative thing, but it's just like like he's in. It's just a factual thing. Yeah, he's like a, like he's from the outside. He's from yeah, like out, Europe and whatnot. And then what I feel, I don't feel like an outsider, mm. but I don't feel like I fit in. Right. So because, you feel much more comfortable here, like walking around London. London. You're like, I'm pure London baby. Yeah. I got my short tracksuit pants. There you go. Yeah. Because bang. when I'm there, I get bored. Uh huh. You don't realize, I, and I think I'd get. I'd how's, get how's the internet? Internet's good. Internet's good decent. Internet. Yeah, decent wow. internet. Yeah. They fixed like a it. shit internet. They they fixed it. It's decent, but it's not as good as here. Like, it's not fiber optic. Oh man, but it's still amazing. decent. Yeah. yeah, like when I when I go back home, it's it's only then you realize how lucky you are to to live in like London, New York, or mm. Paris, or one of these major cities, yeah. right? Because there is something going on that's different every fucking minute of the day right yeah and it's not a small city do you know what i mean like london i can literally get lost yeah of course and you go like west like and there's just it just keeps going like it just keeps going and there's still shit on and you're like what i like you go to those random gigs and it's like 150 people in some place you've never yeah yeah like, All right. so so it's that kind of thing and i'm like when i go back there it's like well this is a city and it's like a small city set, for example the size of liverpool right yeah and it's like once you've been to the city center in liverpool or whatever yeah you pretty much don't want to go there every single day do you well you're not like man i just really got to check out this other thing yeah do you, but, explore more. but there's not a lot going on is it i mean i no. think liverpool's probably a bad example but like no but i know what you mean because that's a like, smaller city do you know what i mean no, like Liverpool's like a million people and like yeah it's like the city center and there's like bars and there's like but some comedy one, clubs and a sports stadium and that's bad yeah Couple days is all you need. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I was just in Luxembourg for a day and a half, and you're like, <sighs> I I had a few hours I didn't need. <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I think we're done, man. I think I've seen. Yeah, but I, and that's how yeah. I felt like once I seen the family, or whatever. Obviously, like there's beautiful, but it's like, dude, there's mm. only so much mountains and greenery that I could see before I'm like, okay, like I need to get back to like hustle and bustle. Like yeah. it's great seeing all that nature and shit and like whatever. And I'm like, oh, there's a waterfall. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But after a while, I'm like, okay, like. I need more stuff. I need stuff. Like, I need plot. I need people. Yeah, I need, man. Yeah. I want to see I want to see someone and ask them like, what mix are you? Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, like you stand outside Topshop on Oxford Circus. Mm. Fuck, man. You will see someone from every country on earth. Yeah, just in and out. Not even a big deal. Just walking, right? And you're like, mm. I, I often walk around London and go, man, I'm, I'm privileged to live here, man. It's fucking awesome. But yeah. then there's shit parts of it. But then, like, I hate a lot of this. I hate a lot about living here, but it's just, I think that's just being British, isn't it? But have you, have you stayed in Brixton the whole time? South London. So live in Streatham now. So Streatham like, now. We, we lived in Brixton and we moved to Streatham. But yes, yeah, like literally down the road. Like, yeah. yeah. And how, like... That is an area kind of has a reputation, I guess, like Brixton. Like I think used to. Used now, to. Now, now it's just gentrified. like gentrified. Of fuck. It's like when people talk about Brooklyn in America, they're like Brooklyn yeah. is white as fuck now. Like so. Yeah, dude, I know. It's I feel very safe there. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing with Brixton. Yeah, Brixton's the same thing. It's like, but that was. But a, then there are still some council states where you take it a wrong turn in. Yeah. In Brixton, there's still a couple council states where shit could go left for you, bro. But was that like when you were growing up? Was it? In the process of gentrifying, had it been gentrified? No, like, like in the nineties, man. So it was more like. So it was before you. Yeah, it was you got before. In. It was before like. Before you were a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. Before like that shit. Well, like, I remember the riot, second wave of riots in ninety five. Yeah, like, right. Like going into school and like somehow seeing like my teachers talk about it and how scared they were and there mm. was like there was a carpet shop that went up in flames and I was like, what happened? And my dad was like, oh, that went. And the flames in the right, and then oh, they, the riots, they, yeah, yeah, they turned it into like a. Now it's a Curry's and a fucking uh, Halfords. 
A Halfords? Yeah. What's a, what's a Halfords? I don't even know. Halfords, a Halfords sells like bikes and like car oh, batteries yeah. and fucking yeah, 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 paints yeah, yeah. for your car and like sound systems for your car and shit. Just, right. Just generic, generic fast and furious. Yeah. So <laughs> that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I, I loved it because it was like, there were so many, like we had a, we had a Colombian kid on our estate called Luciano. Mm. We had like an Eritrean boy on the other side called Tommy. Like we had like, joey and daniel who were like the white working class kids on the estate their mm. dads were mechanics yeah and then it was just me and then all the other kids were black and we just all be playing and it wasn't like it was just we're all poor that yeah. was just the fundamental like glue that held us all together <laughs> do you know what i mean it was just yeah, yeah, that yeah. was it like um so it was it was i loved it growing up when people said it was my dad my dad my dad jokes about it. he's like when he used, he's like he didn't realize it was rough when he was there. It's just, mm. it was where we were housed and my dad was like being like disabled. Like he's just like, I can't fucking be bothered to go and look. Cause a lot of Kurds moved to like Ealing and wherever they're like, this is safer than oh, Brixton. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like this is- So they kind of found their little community. Yeah, so yeah. they were like, let's let's move there. And there were people, tell, my dad's friends would tell him to move. And my dad was like, just can't be bothered to go to Ealing and find mm. like register with a council there instead and whatever. So it was like whatever. He didn't realize it was rough. Yeah, and he's like, he liked it. He was just like, it, Brixton Market was cool. It reminded him of like the bazaars back home. Do you know what I mean? Like the markets yeah, back yeah. home. Like you go down Brixton Market, like butchers here, this there. Yeah, yeah there's like stuff. There's yeah, it's, tables. It, yeah, it's just like it's just like bowls back, of fruit. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, you could buy a bowl of fruit. Boom, we'll put that in yeah. a bag. There you go, a pound. Bye. See you later. Rather than yeah, and just so many garlics. <laughs> That's the one thing is like you know other end of Bethnal Green Road. There's all that, and I'm just like seriously, who's going through that much garlic, bro? Like I just it's but it's like foods from all over the world and stuff is amazing yeah. and it's i, I literally can't oh, that's live. the coolest bit about london for me like that shit doesn't happen in australia like, well this is what i say to people street. i don't like anywhere that's fo populated with just one race yeah absolutely right yeah you know like it i don't want to live well. anywhere that's just an asian community or just a black community or whatever i like living somewhere where it's a yeah. mix so i could like fair enough you've got your areas but like as in like if i'm in a city mm. i want to see everyone yeah and I think London's great for that. They yeah. Do it, they do it smart. Like yeah. They, you know, they got the estates everywhere. They got like kind of moving everyone around. Like if some's affordable, some's not. It's like, good. None of it's affordable anymore. <laughs> None no, of you it should is see Sydney. Up. They just price motherfuckers out. We're just sending them west. Like that's, a, that's the whole Sydney house. Really? Market. Shutting down all the estates, sending them west. Just like, fuck off. We want to make a shitload of foreign investors buying these properties. Fuck. Because they used to be like, used to, they used to have council estates next to Sydney Harbour Bridge, like on the water. Shit, next man. Next to the Harbour Bridge. And they've all just been chucked in like the last 10 years and just sent west. Like there's no rest for I just, it's, where will greed take mankind? Oh man, it's, we got we to hit the fucking point soon. You know, hit the greed point soon. Just all can't right. wait for us to just all fucking rise up and... <laughs> Yeah, I will be there in the comedy club making jokes about it the next day. Yeah, I will not be part of the rebellion. Let Absolutely just... <laughs> right. It's <laughs> like, what is this guy? He went up with a fucking crowbar. What are you gonna do with a crowbar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go, you're gonna steal another crowbar with your crowbar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At the comedy club where it's safe. Yeah. <laughs> doing 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 Bran and Game of Thrones. You know, I'm just sitting back I'm, watching it all take I place. Don't watch Game of Thrones. Oh, that's all right. I don't. I, I was I was like, well, I've mentioned enough. Fuck it, may as well. Um, what was it? one more thing? Would you live anywhere else in the UK? I always think that's an interesting one because like it's probably Manchester. Manchester, you'd do it. Would you want to, or would you like be okay with it? If like I had to film like a BBC sitcom and they were like, the, some the studios are in Manchester or whatever. Yeah, you give it a go. I'll give it a go. Got some Man Manchester's nice. Manchester's like a small London, I feel. Yeah, but it's like it's so small. Like, yeah. I think when people think Manchester, they think like, oh, that's like 4 million people. It's, it's just not. friendlier people as well. Yeah. And it is. I love how you know the population size of all these Yeah, because like I've asked everybody because like I'm so curious because I was just like, there's like 50-ish mil in the UK. And like, I think London's about 10, 12. Mm. Like it, and then I'm just like, but where are the rest of them? Because like I figured it'd be Manchester, but Birmingham's bigger than Manchester. Yeah. And then like, yeah, Manchester's very small, especially in the city center. Like it's mainly the surrounding areas where people yeah. live, which I found strange. I thought Manchester was like the big second city, but it's not. No, it's Birmingham is the second city, but yeah. Manchester's got. But I love Manchester. I think like when people go out there, they go out, they dress yeah. up, that people are friendly. It's just like 
I've the best nights out I've probably had in recent years have been in Manchester. Manchester. Yeah, they're just great people. Good shout. Great people. And I support Man United, even though You support Man United. Yeah. Oof. Difficult position to be in. Hard times. Is that hard is that times. everyone just assumes you're a bandwagoner? Like is that Well, it probably was when I was younger. Yeah. When you're a kid and you're like my dad didn't really have a team or whatever. Like mm. that was just like, ah, football's cool, but he didn't have a team or yeah. keep up to date with it or whatever. So I was seeing Man United win, like and mm. I'm like six years old and Cantona's fucking amazing and Beckham's coming through the ranks. I'm like Yeah. Who I think that's pretty common. I think the yeah. like the rugby league team that I supported as a kid was like, because that's where you can kind of choose, like, because there's a bunch of them in Sydney, and it was just the one that was winning when I was like eight. Yeah, and it's like now they're probably not. Do you know yeah, I know yeah, yeah. oh, they're still doing pretty well. Okay. Um, they're actually probably the Manchester United. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, rugby yeah. League, yeah, but yeah, but they're so not well liked. Yeah, but so 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 it just probably started out as that, but it yeah. doesn't make my love for the club any. Exactly, yeah. I I agree with that completely. Because like yeah. when you're young, it's like it's when you switch in every year when you're older. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. when you're a dick. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. when it's like no, the man's It's like now. yeah, 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 I fucking hate those. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right. Um, you you got your special coming out. You got your podcast. Is there anything anywhere else people can find you doing Edinburgh this year? Not doing Edinburgh <laughs> ever again in my life. Done. Okay. The special. Is there... we'll see where it'll come out right now there's no details about it I mean, dude it was only filmed two days ago so let's... I know that's what I mean but just from... I want to hype it I want people to be yeah 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 uh, it was only filmed two days ago but yeah it was like the first uh, my first hour mm. I was just like let me just put it out there so yeah I think often as comics people are like yeah I'm funnier than that guy yeah I'm funnier why well where's the proof ah so this is your proof yeah do you see where I'm coming from it's like yeah not, not even that I was thinking I'm funnier than that guy, but it's like, often like people are like, where's my opportunity? Why don't you give me an opportunity? Please put me on your, on your show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. why? Why am I begging? I don't like the idea of being at any other man's mercy. Yeah. Just do my own shit. If you resonate with it, thank you very much. Follow me and we can go further. <laughs> and if you don't, it's fine. Fair enough. It's fine. Dude, you wouldn't have heard like, of me anyway. You don't need to like me in this day and age. <laughs> there are people with 3 million followers on Instagram. Yeah. I have no fucking clue who they are. Oh, absolutely. But they're doing sellout shows and whatever. It's just the world is so fragmented now that you can. Yeah. You can follow. Like you can be a fucking star and walk the streets freely. Yeah, it's so interesting. Like we've never we've never been more separate. Like Game of Thrones, I was reading this thing. They reckon Game of Thrones is like the last monocultural icon like it's the last thing. i don't think it will be the last after that everything else will just keep separate. i don't think it will be the last because even that's come out in an era where it's still everything but it's like it's just transcended things if something's good enough mm. it will try do you know what it is we've just been we've just been fed so much mediocrity <laughs> honestly yeah we've been fed so much mediocrity over a decade or two i'd say well, it's just, it's been the content decade. It's yeah, like, just put like, it out. Just, just get it loads out. Loads of mediocrity. Like, yeah. But uh, the big things, everybody's watched Breaking Bad. Yeah. Everybody watched that. That's like true. Game of Thrones, most people watching that. Like, but, yeah. Is there a new, I guess the Avengers thing, like that's kind of. And game people still watching that shit. Yeah. Like. It's interesting. There will still be things that people will watch. Like. Do you, do you reckon there'll be a comedian that'll just kind of, do you reckon something will bring everyone I don't know. I don't think so. Bill Burke can walk the streets of London without anybody stopping him. Absolutely. Like you'd have to say if Joe Bill Rogan's Bur one of the most famous now, but that's not really as a stand up. No, he's more of a podcast host, right? Like a, or as a UFC commentator. Yeah. Where, as a stand up, I'd say Chappelle's probably the like the but even Chappelle, there's loads of people that don't know who Chappelle is. Yeah, and that's kind of from like past stuff as well. Yeah, and like London. same with Seinfeld, you know? Like Seinfeld, like you know him from the T V show and that like he does comedy. But like that was, you know, finished in like the 90s, didn't it? In London, people... Kevin Hart, maybe he's the last Kevin one. Hart. Actually, I'll give you Kevin Hart, I think. Yeah, because he does all the movies and stuff. And then, like, yeah. The most famous person in the world probably has to be the president, right? So it's to be Donald Trump. Probably. I don't know, man. Like, you go to some of those villages, they know who David Beckham is. Really? Football, huh? Messi. Not bad shot. I'd say Messi or Ronaldo. Really? I was saying, like, them, maybe, like, The Rock. Fucking everyone nah, knows man. The Rock, bro. I don't think... Messi or Ronaldo, bro. Messi or Ronaldo? Think, like, there's, there's a kid in Guatemala that fucking knows who Ronaldo is. That doesn't have a fucking clue who The Rock is. Oh, man. That makes me sad. I got to get to Guatemala. <laughs> but, like, this is The Rock. Like He's going like, to make you feel better about everything. But, but like, 
you know, somewhere in Costa Rica, I don't think they give a shit about what The Rock is doing. Yeah, it but is interesting. They must he's be. He's jacked, bro. Like, <laughs> oh, look how he did The Rock Bomb. That shit's not happening. Hey, man. Fast and Furious movie franchise Football. transcends Football. culture. Yeah, they, they've just. <laughs> I love Fast and Furious anyway. Dude, I love Fast and yeah. Furious like so much. It's, it's McDonald's. Ludicrous. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. You think they're adding Keanu Reeves and John Cena to the next one? That is mental to me, but right? Yeah, I'm like, fuck yeah. All right, we're getting we're getting off topic. Um, mate, thank you so much. Thanks uh, for having me. People can find you Instagram At and Twitter. K a e k u r d. K a e k u r d. Just type that into any fucking social network. You'll come up. I'll come up. My face you're, is there. You're. Are you the only one? Are you the only K Curd? Yeah, of course. Giving it a stage name. It's like yeah. this is me, baby. Although I've had a few fake profiles, that's why I had to get verified. Ah. People starting up pictures of me trying to message girls and shit. Really? Yeah, I was like, dude, it's not my looks that gets me girls. Like, it's, <laughs> I'm funny, okay? <laughs> Learn that. Trying to use my pictures won't get you yeah. anywhere, bro. Use someone else. That There are fucking tons more better looking guys that you could use. There's some hot dudes out there. Exactly. Like, which is. But like abs and shit. Yeah, like, I'm like, why the fuck are you using me, you prick? I mean, that's, that's a good system, though. If, I, if anyone's thinking about doing that with me, I totally endorse it and I allow it. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll send you the photos it's certainly <laughs> flattering you're like yeah I'm, I'm, but you're like hey guys can you please report this profile they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're pretending to be me they're pretending to be I'm again <laughs> <laughs> alright man the way we end is you say cheers mate think you can handle it cheers mate fucking nailed it okay curd pleasure All right, what an interesting chat with K. Kerr talking about coming over here, living the British life, feeling definitely more British than Kurdish, but half half. I like that. I like that analogy. It's like a, it's like one parent was each, because you know he was born to Kurdish parents and he was raised in the UK. I think that's a very eloquent way to put something. A lot of people find quite complex. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that chat. I really did. I always find it interesting to talk about the urban circuit and the way that it kind of affects the way that you start doing comedy. And then when you switch across and go a little bit more mainstream, uh, you, you just got a, di- you got a different idea of what people should be doing and a different understanding of crowds just because of how you started. But uh, Kay obviously just filmed his special a few days ago, so it won't be out for a minute. But do keep an eye out. Uh, you can grab him on Instagram and Twitter, both uh, places. He is prolific, at K Kurd, spelt K-A-E-K-U-R-D. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, as always, please jump across to iTunes and take the time to give us five stars. That does count. It does help. We're five stars all the way so far, but we want more reviews. We want more reviews so we get more popular. That's what we like. As always, thank you so much for tuning in and listening. I'll be back next week with some brand new guests. I'm actually in London for a minute. So hopefully things will start coming out a bit more regularly than they are now. But I appreciate your patience as always. If you want to come catch me live, the Brighton Fringe is just around the corner. I'm down in Brighton Fringe uh, May 12th, 19th and June 2nd uh, at the Temple Bar at quarter to four in the afternoon because it isn't a fringe festival unless you are telling dirty jokes while the sun is still out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, your goddamn pleasure as always. My name is Daniel Muggleton. This is the Union Jackoff, and I'll catch you next week. Cheers. Cheers.